from Lions Memorial Field here in North Augusta, South Carolina on the Friday night before Labor Day. It's the Wagner Sally War Eagles and the Fox Creek Predators. It's the AUG B-Ball Game of the Week powered by SUV TV. And hello again, everyone. Corey Hodges, Sylvester Williams here with you. Excited to be back for week number two. Now, week one on SUV TV was obviously cut short due to Mother Nature. Should not be the case tonight. We are expecting clear skies throughout the evening. And like last Friday, Sly, very hot outside. Now, hot competition as well. Wagner Sally, a powerful team, had a 46-2 win last week in week one over a uh, local opponent and you look at Fox Creek their first action of the season so after uh, Wagner Sally put up 46 points what are you expecting Fox Creek to have to do tonight on defense to stop the War Eagles well first thing they have to do on defense is stop the run they have to stop the run if they want to stop those War Eagles what the War Eagles do they run the ball I was talking to coach last night and coach said we had nine different players carry the ball last week. That's everybody gets a chance to run. <laughs> you know, everybody gets a chance at the picnic the party. Yeah, and that's what we're going to be looking at tonight, a, an opportunistic offense, if you will, for Wagner. Sally looking to get everyone involved. We'll see a couple of uh, key players as well who will get their time. But on the other side for Fox Creek, they're going to have to try to take advantage of Wagner Sally any way that they can. But Fox Creek, this is the home for the Predators, so they have the home support. We'll look now at a glance. And Wagner Sally, 10 and 2 last season, Sly Fox Creek 4 and 6 last season. But here's the big key Fox Creek winning last season's week two meeting by a score of 19 to 12. So that was, uh, you know, a big week two matchup. Got a seven point win. Fox Creek trying to do it again in week number two. And for them, week number one here in 2019. You know, like you said, last last season right. was a whole different regime. We got a brand new head coach, first year head coaching. Um, Coach, Coach Stewart, it'll mm -hmm. be his first year head coaching. So he's coming in here. He's he's getting ready to experience these guys from Wagner Series. Sally wanting some get back. Right. They want some comeback. They want, they want a little bit to capitalize on what happened last year. Yeah. They want to go and make up the mistake from last year. And you got a brand new coach coming in and say, oh, I got to deal with this. Exactly. <laughs> Woo. It's a whole lot to handle tonight. Lafayette Stewart uh, certainly looks like he is up to the challenge. We all know that Willie Fox will be up to the challenge for Wagner Sally. So you see a look there on the uh, right side window of your screen at the uh, large legion of fans that are out here. Again, on the uh, final Friday before Labor Day, a huge crowd here at Lions Memorial Field. And soon we will see the players on the field as well. And of course, that leads us in to our keys to the game slide. And you have them for us, presented by Lineage of Champions. Youth versus experience. Youth versus experience. Let me break this down for you a second. Fox Creek has a sophomore starting at quarterback. Their backup, another sophomore starting at quarterback. I talked to Coach Coach, uh, Coach Stewart uh, Wednesday night, and he said 80% of his team are sophomores and, and freshmen. Now, on the other side, Wagner Sally, I talked to Coach Fox, and Coach Fox said, hey, this is the first time, this is one of the first times that I have a completely junior and senior laden team. I asked him for who are some of the standouts he, was, he might have as freshman and sophomore, and it took him a while to think yeah. because he doesn't have that many. So it's youth versus experience tonight. And uh, who can stop the run as well? That's going to be important. We have a, uh, a big rusher for Wagner Sally. We're going to be watching tonight. We'll get more into the rosters, the lineups, the players to watch here in a couple moments once we get to, uh, get the kickoff underway. But certainly the run game, something that Fox Creek will try to stop tonight. If Fox Creek wants to win tonight, they must stop the run. Wagner Sally, they sit there. Like I said earlier, they had nine players get a taste of that rock. Nine players got a chance to run the ball last week. And coach says he doesn't pass a lot, but when he passes, he passes with a purpose. So he's going to go downfield. So what's going to happen? Happen if you're Fox Creek, you have to stop the run. Now, if you're Wagner Sally, you want to keep on running all night long. Try to keep it going on a Friday night, and also don't beat yourself. I think that's even more critical for Fox Creek because, again, much like our Week One matchup with uh, Richmond and Hepzibah, one team is heavily favored. That would be Wagner Sally. So Fox Creek just has to eliminate those mistakes and just focus on their game plan, right? Exactly. Fox Creek, they can't make the little young 
player mistakes. Right. It's early in the season. You have a lot of young players out here playing. So now you can't beat yourself. You can't have an offside penalty. You can't have a silly holding penalty. If you're Fox Creek, you have to avoid those things. You go over to the other side of the ball if you're Wagner Sally. Last year, Wagner Sally beat themselves against Fox Creek. That's what the people at Wagner Sally want you to believe. Right. They beat themselves. They had turnovers. Come the fourth quarter, they got a little tired. They got winded. You can't beat yourself if you want to win. Yeah, and that's what it's going to come down to tonight, especially because of the matchup that we saw last season. Again, just a seven-point win last season for Fox Creek. So it's going to be a tight matchup tonight. Wagner Sally, of course, coming in, as we mentioned, the 46 points last week against Pelion, and uh, it could be something to watch tonight to see if they can duplicate that offense. But that is so difficult to do week one to week two to regenerate your offense and bring it back. So we'll see if it arrives here tonight in North Augusta, South Carolina, just a couple moments away from uh, seeing the Fox Creek Predators head out on onto the field, you'll see them again there on the right hand window, the side of your screen. But again, much like week one slide, we are dealing with the elements again. We're going to be reinstating this for the next couple of weeks until it finally starts to cool down. But again, it's 90 degrees outside. The sun is out. It's going to be boiling. After all, it is Labor Day weekend. So again, it's going to be another one of those uh, opportunities in a way to try and make sure that the conditioning rises to the surface, all that preparation. One of my favorite times of the year, it is pickle juice and banana time of the year. You have to have those hydroelectric, hydro, hydroelectricity and carbohydrates and everything. You have to have that in your body. You have to be regenerated. You know, you go through all summer long. These kids are out there working in the summer heat. They're trying to get their body acclimated to the heat. But you can do all that training. But if you're not hydrated, right. if you don't have the right amount of electrolytes in you or all that other fancy stuff, hey, you can mess around and catch your favorite horse. Who's my favorite horse? Charlie. <laughs> you can mess around and catch it. So you have to make sure conditioning is so big. And I think these guys have been taking care of themselves so yeah. far. They've been working throughout the summer to get ready for tonight. We're going to take our first pause here on the pregame show and we'll come back and get ready for the Fox Creek Predators to head out and the kickoff. It's the Friday night game of the week, the AUG B-Ball game of the week on SCB TV. I'm at Lions Memorial Field the home field for the ninth annual CSRA All-Star Bowl Games, which will be played on December 21st. The CSRA All-Star Bowl Week is a foundational sponsor of the AUG B-Ball Game of the Week, and it's our... What is it about some places? The places where we feel a sense of fellowship, where service is of the highest priority, whether to each other or to ourselves. A journey familiar like a warm bath for the soul. Along the way we may get lost, but we always seem to find a friendly hand reaching out, guiding us the way back there, where we owe it to our younger selves. Just to feel like we're getting a little bit better at us. This place will always be there for you. This place is sacred, because this place is home. on the AUG B-Ball Game of the Week, powered by SUV TV. It's the Wagner Sally War Eagles and the Fox Creek Predators were from Lions Memorial Field here in North Augusta, South Carolina. Back on the pregame show, you see the captains out on the field for Wagner Sally, Roderick Williams, Kevin Jackson, Caleb Shaw. We'll talk a lot about Shaw tonight. Weston Williams, we'll talk about double W as well. And then on the other side, the three captains for Fox Creek slide. So Wagner Sally, and uh, you see the captains there. And then for Fox Creek, Jatonius Butler, Caleb Trahan, and Jackson Pruitt. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm up here confusing Corey. 
I'm up here confusing Corey. I can't read my own writing. I thought I thought I gave him the wrong lineups. But Corey, being the ultimate professional that he is, he made sure everything was right. And I'm over here nervous thinking I'm giving Corey the wrong names. But Corey, it's a reason why he does this. It's a reason why he does this. He's all right with me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Well, hey, you had to write down the captains first. I didn't have a look at them. so. And I, and I thought I had them confused. I thought I wrote on the wrong page. But I, I got you. Yeah, there you go. But see, Corey, hey. he cleaned it up for me. He got he everything it. on. It's teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's it. Right here on SUV TV. So you see those uh, captains on the field now for Wagner Sally and for Fox Creek. And they're discussing a couple of things pregame. And, again, ready for the run out of the inflatable tunnel. And, just moments away from kickoff, uh, about four minutes away, a 7.30 scheduled kickoff. You see Chad Cook down there on the field and Chad getting some shots as well. Saw Chad on the field when I came in and, and he of course was down there already on the surface and getting some nice pregame shots as everyone gets ready tonight for a very anticipated matchup. Ooh, shout out to Chad Cook, man, yeah. all the work he's, he does. Uh, for the uh, AUGB ball, and you know he he, he overlapped in the football this year. You know right. I always knew Chad as a great basketball guy, but in our pregame, our, our early midweek conferences, when we sit down and we talk about these players and we talk to the coaches and stuff, Chad is always on top of this information. Man, he is a fountain of information. We want to say big shout out to Chad Cook down there. No doubt about that. We are so excited to have Chad aboard and really everyone aboard and uh, our great team that is back again here for week two of the season. You know, this place is packed and everyone is filling every nook and cranny and this is really the moment that everyone waits for to see the Fox Creek Predators, the home team, come rushing out of the tunnel. Again, under the leadership of head coach Lafayette Stewart, it's Willie Fox on the other side. Lafayette Stewart saying to us on Wednesday, Sly, nothing much, is, uh, nothing much has changed in the weight room or on the field in terms of you know, some of their preparation and how he has done things since coming from just assistant coaching positions to where he is now. You see Wagner, Sally, and, and coach down there on the field, Coach Fox for the War Eagles, and that's you know, 10 and two last season for Wagner, Sally, four and six for Fox Creek. But I thought that was an interesting point as you can, you see Willie Fox there, that head coach Lafayette Stewart said, you know, all those assistant coaching positions as the Predators come out onto the field. But even though this is his first time as a head coach, he's saying that everything is pretty much all business still. You know, it's all business. You know, he's an experienced assistant coach, but even though he might feel it's all business. Yeah. It's a big difference when you're wearing that head, when you're wearing that headset, and you're the guy in charge of making that call. Are we gonna go for it on fourth down? <laughs> it's a yeah. lot of pressure, a lot of weight, and, and we're proud to say we you know we're gonna have his first game ever That's right. as the head coach. Will be right here on SUV TV. So this should be a great one. Yeah, this is where it all starts. We're ready to get things going. Again, everyone is gathered tonight, and electricity in the air, as they say. 70s since Wagner uh, Wagner Sally reached the state championship game. They're trying to change that here in 2019 for Fox Creek. Again, Lafayette Stewart, first year as a head coach. We'll be watching C.J. Tillman tonight along with Jatonius Butler. And they have never made it past the second round, have the Fox Creek Predators. But mm -hmm. again, that can change here in week one. You know, one thing, if you don't know much about Wagner Sally, you don't know much about football, you can look at Wagner Sally and say, boy, they look good, good getting off the bus. Oh, yeah, they, <laughs> they did. Look, for a 1A school, <laughs> they look really good getting off the bus. We'll find out what they play like. It'll be the War Eagles to get the opening touch. We're off and away on the Friday before Labor Day 2019. The War Eagles get it first, return on the way, trying to search out some extra room. Fox Creek was on that one pretty much from the start. Not the big wallop that we had last week in week one to start the football game, but regardless, that only gets out to about maybe the 30-yard line for the War Eagles. You know, that's perfect. That's the way you want to start a game off right there. Nice pooch kick. He, he tried to keep it away from the dangerous return men. It was a nice pooch kick, and then you had your coverage team kind of shut him down, and he probably got maybe three or four yards on the return. So 34-yard line, a great place to start the game off. Looked like Weston Williams there to take it out, unless my eyes deceive me. We'll have to battle this sun that is glaring from our left side here in the press box. Opening carry for Wagner Sally. It's only maybe about a yard. That's Kevin Jackson who took it out that time. Jackson, the senior running back. 
you know, big play right there coming up on the side is uh, Jontanius Butler. Jontanius Butler coming up, lowering his shoulder from that DB position to make that tackle. Nice play by Butler. Peanut. Peanut, that's right. Peanut, the nickname for Butler. Uh, playing much bigger than a peanut, though. We'll see that <laughs> defensively tonight. Second down and nine from the 35-yard line for Wagner Sally. One in the backfield. Again, another carry here for Kevin Jackson. It's back to back to Jackson to start. Fox Creek searching out Jackson pretty well again there, Sly. Oh, yeah. Beautiful tackle. Beautiful penetration right there by C.J. Tillman. C.J. Tillman, Lauren getting down low in the hole, making the tackle for a loss. You'd love to see your big defensive tackles step up on a play, step up on, on defense like that. Now, here we go. Third and long. Put them in a difficult situation. That's right. Third and eight on the 36. So Wagner Sally has the football. Fox Creek trying to turn away the War Eagles here on their opening drive. Keeping it on his own. Big carry out to the 50, now to the 40. This is a breakaway for Kevin Jackson. And Jackson almost got to pay dirt to start. Pushed out at around the 15. Now that's a beautiful run right there. That's that R. That's that RPO re. I mean, uh, run pass option right there. Look at him rolling out to the side. CZ doesn't have anything. It was just a one receiver route. Just had that one receiver running straight down the field. Man to man coverage. Hey, you take it and you go straight down the field and pick up as much as you can pick up. And he picked up 30, 40 yards on the run. Big run that time for Jackson. He was in the backfield and took it, found room on the outside, almost went all the way home. That's a first down pickup, ball on the 18 yard line, a little under 10 and a half to go here, opening quarter. Again, it's Kevin Jackson. This has all been a Kevin Jackson drive and Jackson will get inside to the end zone. That's a touchdown. Wagner Sally strikes first. It's Kevin Jackson for six. Nice run by Jackson, getting to the outside, following his blocks. Great block by the wide receiver on the outside. And you just lower your shoulder, and look at him kind of deliver the blow right there on the goal line to go ahead and cross, cross into the end zone. Great run by Jackson to score the touchdown. Again, Wagner Sally with a wallop last week in their victory. Repellian, and they're off to a touchdown start. And they'll try to get a little bit more, but this one is pushed back in a hurry as Ryan Argro tried to take it that time for a little extra into the end zone, but nothing doing. It'll stay a 6-0 Wagner Sally lead. The War Eagles trying to go for a couple extra that time, two extra to be exact. And this is exactly what Wagner Sally wanted to do. They wanted to come out here and they wanted to run the ball, establish dominance on the ground, and that's exactly what they did. The first two plays, great job by Fox Fox Creek was stepping up and making the tackles in the backfield. But, hey, push come to shove, that third and long, when you have a good athletic quarterback like that and he has a little bit of an arm to him so you have to respect the pass, right. well, he just rolls out and takes it up the field for 40 yards. And that's it, just like that. Yeah, that was all Kevin Jackson on that drive. And uh, he almost had the big burst to get into the house. It was turned away. But then uh, – Smaller field, only a little bit under 20 yards, and that goes into that goal line offense. You hear so much mm -hmm. about goal line defense, but that time it certainly was Jackson who took advantage of the under 20 to the end zone territory and got it in for the score. Yeah, great thing. One of the great stats of football is how well you do in the red zone. Yeah. How well you do in the red zone tells you what type of team you have, what type of, what type of program you have, what type of toughness you have. And this was, this was a chance they were just in the red zone for one play and That's put right. it in the end zone. Yeah, that red zone offense. Obviously, Sterling last week in that 46-2 to two win of Appellion and trying to duplicate that. He still, got, uh, still have 40 points to go to get to the 46 they scored last week, but off to the touchdown start is Jackson. So now Fox Creek will get the football for the first time tonight. You know, they delivered the beat down to Pillion. One, the funny thing about, uh, about the beat down uh, Coach Fox delivered, Coach Fox played at Pillion, coached at Pillion. How about that? <laughs> Taken from the 30-yard line now to the 40, slamming ahead almost to the 50. And return that time for Fox Creek was Noah Barnett. Looked like it was Barnett who took that out. We'll have another look at the kickoff return. Yes, Barnett taking it out, met by two. Wagner Sally. Now, see, that's a great 
That's a great start to your drive right there. You want to, you have great field position, 47-yard line. You're in the middle of the field. Now that gives comfort to a young quarterback. He's not playing with his back to the end zone. Nigel Brown, one of those on the tackle for Wagner Sally on the return. Here's a little toss play. And lost in the backfield now is Gentonius Butler. But Butler finding his way back to the 50. He almost gets out to the 45-yard line. <laughs> Hey, on that play right there, give it up for your young quarterback putting his body on the line, his whole life on the line, trying wow. to throw a block <laughs> for his teammate. Look at this right here. The young quarterback's coming out here. He's going to throw a block. Oh, nope, he paid for it. <laughs> he put his body on the line, sacrificed himself for the team. <laughs> Jaden Johnson that time definitely giving himself up to help out Jantonius Butler. Here's a carry to Malik Williams. Williams searching for room anywhere he can find it. He's met by two War Eagles to stop his little drive that was perimeter focused. And see right here, this is where Williams has to become an inside runner. He has to become a decisive runner. He tried to stretch that play to the outside, but that play was supposed to go right off a tackle in between that wing back. He tried to push it out too far. And once he tried to push it out too far, that was all she wrote. So third and six on the 41. A couple of signs for quarterback Jaden Johnson. Johnson will step up now back, one in the backfield alongside Johnson. Here's the handoff, searching, and able to get a little bit of an extra push. Malik Williams again, that time straight up the middle. Straight up the middle, right there. He lowered his shoulder, took that inside, what we call gut play, had a guard come around and block. Look at 58, coming in, clean up the hole, right there in the middle. Great block by that young man, and that's what springs him open for that, for that first down run. Great block by the young offensive lineman right there, number 58, Jackson Pruitt, the captain. 8.42 to go opening quarter, 6-0 Wagner Sally over Fox Creek. It's first and 10 from the 35 for the Predators. Johnson keeping it on his own, airing it out to the Ooh. end zone. That one is caught for the touchdown. Fox Creek able to respond. It's Noah Barnett. Barnett gets six to match his jersey number. You know what? It doesn't get any prettier than that. That was a beautiful pitch and catch. Look at him go over the top. Beautiful ball. You see that spiral, and it just drops right in there. It does not get any better than that. That's a pro caliber. That's a college caliber pass right there by the young sophomore. We're seeing a little bit of Clemson offense that time. How about Alabama offense that time? Going up aerial and deep. Take your pick in this part of the country. That's some pure quality football, as you said, Sly. Noah Barnett with a score from quarterback Jaden Johnson. And so now Fox Creek will set up and try to get the lead here. All nodded at six after the score. And we saw Wagner Sally attempting it to go for two as you see another look at the touchdown. Despite the coverage from Roderick Williams, just better offense that time, better catch for Noah Barnett. There you go. But that was just plain and simple, straight nine route, straight down the field. Nothing fancy, nothing special. He had great protection inside from his offensive lineman. Doesn't get too much prettier than that. Not at all. Kick will be lined up here for Jackson Ray. Ray trying to put Fox Creek ahead. Ooh. Kick is up, and that one was deflected. Not a chance that time for Ray. And It'll have to remain a tied up ball game. Fox Creek and Wagner Sally nodded at six. Big uh, Jacob Schofield came in there and swallowed that ball up down the middle of the line. That's a big man. That's a whole lot of mountain to try to kick over in the middle down there. That is. Good look there, Sly. At, as you said, pinpointing Jacoby Schofield, who made life tough for Ray, the kicker for Fox Creek. So it's six all with. 8.27 to go here in the opening quarter. And we've seen a bundle of offense so far. Nice little aerial ball and Wagner Sally keeping it on the ground, able to punch it in with a rushing touchdown. So we've seen the air game work and the ground game work. A little mm. bit of everything so far. A little bit of everything, man. I, I like this. A nice balance right here. If you got one team that's going to run it all day, let's get the other team to put it in the air, man. Hey, I love it. Yeah, it's nice to see parity, if you will. Uh, both teams able to respond to one another. It's See the student section, it's clearly Hawaiian night, tropical night. Couldn't pick a better night to come out with the Hawaiian lays and the uh, 
tropical gear. If you know, probably so many people trying to head to the beach, I know I am. <laughs> uh, get to the beach tomorrow, and if you got a chance to get near some water, you can have some fun this weekend. Yeah, as long as you don't go too far south. Hey, <laughs> good point. That's right. We cannot forget about Dorian. <laughs> That's it. Wagner Sally will get the ball, and this is out to about the 42, 43 yard line. That's where the War Eagles will start their second drive of the evening. All right, now see, here's the danger of the pooch, the pooch kick. If you're going to pooch kick it like that, your, your um, kickoff team, they have to run down there like a bat out of you know what. Right. They have to go down there and close that gap fast because what happens if you pooch kick it to about the 25, they end up on the 15. I mean, they end up on the 40-yard line because you didn't cover the punt. I mean, cover the kick fast enough. That was Cameron Davis who was taking it out that time for Wagner Sally. War Eagles start tied up with Fox Creek six all. Here's a run and the carry again for Kevin Jackson. We saw a big time presence by Kevin Jackson on the opening drive for Wagner Sally. Yeah, big time run by Mr. Jackson. And see what I love? It looks like the quarterback is, is moving his hands, mm -hmm. but the running back is catching the ball. This is as close as we're going to get to that old single wing type offense, man. You don't know who's going to catch the ball after they snap the ball. Man. True. Yeah, it, it could go really anywhere. It's almost like a hot potato once it starts and it could flip and roll to anyone. Second and six from the 45. Ooh, Wagner Sally finding some room again, pushing ahead. A couple of Fox Creek Predators trying to stop the run that time and the carry that time for Caleb Shaw. We finally get our first look at Shaw tonight for Wagner Sally. Shaw got in there and got behind his, got behind his blockers. Look at him just falling his way up in the hole and turning it up. Boom, straighten that hole and getting behind those blockers, man. You know, as a contrast from the running back earlier on the last drive, that our Fox Creek had, their running back tried to get to the outside and was trying to force it to the outside. But what Shaw did, Shaw turned up inside that hole and went on the inside. I think we got a young man down hitting on his heel. We do, yeah, that's a player down for the War Eagles. You know, only a couple that start with seven, and it's not a, unless it's a single seven, doesn't look like it is. We'll see the number. That looks to be Jace Johnson who is down. Johnson is now getting a hand up, and he'll get a little bit of assistance back to the sidelines. Yep, hard to tell what's going on with that leg right there. Right. You know, lower leg injury, young man, he, he'll make it off the field. Uh, best wishes and prayers with him. Yeah, it's, it's that part of the season where you're just getting going. You would hate to have an injury derail your season early on. You want to be out here as long as you can. But again, as we mentioned a couple of times last week in our First week coverage slide, same thing applies here in week two. It's still hot, you're still trying to get your legs under you from preseason football. You have scrimmages, yes, but unlike mm -hmm. the NFL, you do not have four scrimmages week after week after mm -hmm. week before you get to the regular season. So sometimes things like that happen. You know, one thing, these teams have to get in the mid-season form, but it looks like the student section over there, they're already in playoff form. They hadn't sat down yet. Yeah, that is... Uh, it is quite something to see that student section. Here's a carry for Kevin Jackson. And Jackson is summarily dismissed by Fox Creek. One of those coming in on defense that time was C.J. Tillman. Flag is down, Sly. Yeah, that's going to be a holding. They tried to grab the big defensive end. Look at him. He tackled him. He didn't even hold him. He tackled him. <laughs> you know, if you're going to hold, make sure, it works. make sure it's worth it, right? Yeah. Great job of the defensive end of getting penetration in the backfield. It, anytime you get penetration like that, you're going to force that offensive lineman to do something he didn't want to do. And that was right there was a holding. <laughs> That's our first yellow bandana on this Friday night. Play on. Seven and a half to go here, opening quarter. Six all. Wagner Sally, Fox Creek. Uh, one in the backfield for the War Eagles. Taking it, some room, or at least searching for some, Ethan Stroman. And Stroman will get out to about the 38 yard line. Stroman, one of the bigger backs on, on the squad. Look at him, he's a strictly inside runner. Look at that right there. Going in there and he's one of those guys, you know, carrying people down the field. I love to see those inside runners go at it. So after the carry for Stroman, it's third and two from the 37. And had some encroachment there for Fox Creek. That looked to be Jawan Hudson. 
Number 24. Trying to get a little jump on the play. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be careful. Good job by – I'm not sure if I want to call the guy the quarterback. I'm not sure if he's the quarterback, halfback, or what. But he's giving those good – those hard snap counts, he's using his hands, you know, to signal the center. And what's happening, defensive players, you must watch the ball. The quarterback can say whatever he wants to say. It doesn't make a difference. You have to watch the ball. And that's that discipline I talked about a little earlier. That's it. 80% of, of the roster for Fox Creek High School comprised of sophomores. And Coach Lafayette Williams saying, uh, Lafayette Stewart rather, saying that would scare a lot of people, but not him. Oh. And this one is caught, complete, <laughs> trying to push all the way ahead to the end zone. He'll be, uh, he'll be stopped a little bit short, Elijah Davis. Elijah Davis caught that one. And look at the beautiful quick snap. Look at the, the quick three-step drop. Bam, bam, bam. Tight end gets a free release off the line. And boom, he just cradles that thing in there. Big man just cradles it in there. And he gives a man a ride. <laughs> yeah, he gave two of them a ride that time. And that was Dewan Miles and Donovan Williams who were taken along that time by Elijah Davis. It's first and goal from the five-yard line for Wagner Sally. Well, it's Jackson again looking for room. Is he able to get in? He's there. Kevin Jackson, second touchdown of the night for the Wagner Sally War Eagles. And it's number six who gets another six. Look at that, another six-yard, six, number six, six-yard run, six points. I don't know how we how we should think about that mm. one. <laughs> a six pack right now uh, for I'm telling you. It's a two pack of a possible six for Kevin Jackson. He's had a hot start here for Wagner Sally. They lead it 12 to 6. 12 to 6. And, you know, I love it. He just followed his line and went on in. Now they called the timeout. Now this is curious. Wagner Sally. This right here is a early season type thing. Usually you hardly ever see a team call a timeout after they score a touchdown you know, to kick the extra point. Yeah. But it's early season. You're still working out some of the kinks. You're still trying to figure out everything you have going on. So, boom, you got a timeout just like that this early. Man, it's still the first quarter, man. It's been three touchdowns scored already. We still got six minutes to go. I'm not sure if we were prepared for this <laughs> after uh, having our week one broadcast cut short. We didn't even make it to uh, halftime last week in uh, Hepzibah, Georgia. We have moved up into uh, South Carolina here for – Week number two, such a busy time here in the state of South Carolina, obviously with Labor Day weekend and you know, about two hours or so you go east, you'll hit Darlington where the Southern 500 will be contested on Sunday. A lot of fast cars, a lot of big hits, and we're seeing some fast players and some big hits and some uh, firepower on offense so far. I'm telling you, a lot of firepower out here today, man. This game is, is moving along. It is. Well, 12-6 after the timeout for Wagner Sally. They're going to try to get in and get some more points. That one is mm. caught one-handed, pulled in. And the catch that time for Wagner Sally was Ryan Argro. Good catch by Argo, but he got to keep his footing on that mm -hmm. one. He had to reach out there for it in the fancy uh, Odell Beckham type catch. Yeah. But uh, got to keep your footing. <laughs> Yeah, it looked almost exactly like. Look at that. Stay on your feet. You only got one more yard to go, kid. So close, and especially with the, uh, with the color scheme for Wagner Sally. You could almost put a different number on there, and you would almost imagine OBJ wearing that uniform. I'm telling you. Red to white and the blue. It's 12-6 Wagner Sally over Fox Creek. Here on SUV TV, Corey Hodges, Sylvester Williams here with you from Lions Memorial Field, inside Lions Memorial Stadium here in North Augusta, South Carolina. You see um, head coach for Fox Creek, Lafayette Stewart. His assistants as well, having some words with their team to get them ready to go for the next drive. And yeah, already 18 combined points. And we're seeing an offense for Wagner Sally that propelled last week to the tune of 46, coming out and trying to Maybe duplicate that tonight, but Fox Creek is hanging right in there. Nice to see that drive from a little bit earlier. We've seen each team pretty much have the football and somehow, some way, get down and score. This is a slow little roller, actually. Not even a roller. It bounds into the hands of Fox Creek's Caleb Busby. Busby and the Predators, Sly, will have it at about the 49-yard line. Great job of being heads up by Busby. You know, a lot of times these young guys, they 
forget their first responsibility on that front line. The first responsibility is to make sure the ball goes over your head. Great job by Bucksby of sitting out there, realizing it was a pooch kick, realizing it was an onside kick, and he caught it and just fell straight to the ground. Great job by Bucksby. We've got the action right in front of us now, almost from dead midfield. Fox Creek, they'll go on the ground here to start. Wrangle down by three War Eagles that time. Uh, on the ground from Fox Creek was Malik Williams. Yeah, great job by Williams of getting inside, trying to pick up some tough yardage. But look at the wrap-up right there. As a defender, make sure your arms are around the player and wait for your team to come on over there and help and bring them down. Good job of the defense of team tackling, game tackling, bringing the man down. Kevin Jackson, not a one-dimensional player at all. He was one of the three in there that time for Wagner Sally, along with Ethan Stroman. There's some room up the middle, but again, Wagner Sally is on it. They're able to close that hole. And that's a run that was almost a burst turned away from Malik Williams. And uh, Jeremiah Bynum was in there for Wagner Sally. A yeah, great job of mentioning how they closed the hole. Because the hole was there in the beginning. But look how they converge. Look how everybody converges and shuts down that gap when that gap's open. Great job of defense from uh, Wagner Sally, the War Eagles. Yeah, they say meet at the quarterback sometimes. How about meet at the running back that time on Malik Williams? Third and seven from the 46. Here's a rollout for Johnson. Now he'll cut back, looking inside, a little burst, actually a big burst, almost out to the 30-yard line that time for Fox Creek quarterback Jaden Johnson. A great pickup, way to change your direction. That play was originally supposed to roll out to the, roll out to the right because they had that wide receiver coming crack back, but nothing was there, and way to just run straight through some arms. Don't let those arm tackles bring you down. Way to pick up the first down by the young sophomore. Two true sophomore quarterbacks on this Fox Creek team. Wagner Sally, little uh, move across the line that time. It looked like the culprit was possibly Jatik Davis. Saw a number nine come out a little prematurely for the War Eagles. You'll see the replay now. There goes that early movement. So, first and five from the 33. Here's a run. Trying to find a little bit of room. Wagner Sally was on that one. Ball carrier that time for Fox Creek was Ryan Chavis. Great job of defense by Wagner Sally. Just shutting down all points of entry on that defensive line. Nowhere for you to go. And boom, they pick it up. One yard gain, if that. Maybe a one yard gain. Maybe two or three. Maybe two. Maybe give them two. Yeah, saying now second and five. Yeah, oh, it was, God. It was right they, there, so. I didn't think they, they got that much. I could have been, huh? I'm way off. <laughs> second and five from the 28. A little under four minutes to go. Opening quarter, Wagner Sally with the advantage. Johnson, after a nice run, he'll keep it on his own. He'll toss. It's complete. Close to the marker for the first down. A little bit of extracurricular <laughs> now going afterwards. And another catch that time from Malik Williams. A little bit of hugging going over there yeah. on the sideline. Young men just talking to each other, trying to figure out where to go after the game. That's all. That's the only thing. You know, just conversation about what's going on after the game. Are we going to cookout? Yeah. Are we going to Zaxby's? Yeah, that's all. Right. <laughs> so we're seeing Williams now in a position to where not just running the football. That time he actually caught the pass from Jaden Johnson. He's maneuverable. Third and four from the 27. Again, you only need four yards if you're Fox Creek. They are awfully close to that first down marker, maybe just a tick short. One thing I do like what Fox Creek is doing, they're giving a lot of misdirection. You know, they fake the hand off to one side, and then they send them back to the other side. Just a lot of misdirection and guys moving in different places. Now, here's the danger when you do that. You're usually one less blocker. So that could come back to hurt you, or it could fool everybody. It was Williams again that time. It's fourth and two from the 25, 2.37 to go opening quarter. Jaden Johnson will get a couple of instructions from the sideline. He's in the backfield with Malik Williams. Two yards for the fourth down pickup. If the Predators can convert. Williams shifting over to the left side of Jaden Johnson. Johnson now taking it on his own. He'll go ahead and pass. This one is caught. And down close to the end zone short of course from getting in for the score 
And that one complete for Fox Creek. Uh, Donovan Williams. I don't know, man. I'm looking on my roster, and they have Jaden Johnson. They, I keep saying he's a sophomore, but he's way more composed than a sophomore starting in his first game right here. Look at the patience that the young man has. He's rolling off to his weak hand. He's rolling to his left side, and he still manages to be composed enough to throw the pass. Uh, Fox Creek, they're right there at the goal line trying to go. Wagner Sally keeping them from doing so. Again, a carry for Malik Williams that time. Williams got wrapped up trying to get to that outside corner, but the, but the War Eagle defense didn't want any of that. Like second and four from the four-yard line. 90 seconds left here, opening quarter. Jaden Johnson again with Malik Williams in the backfield. Johnson will keep it. Johnson finding some room. Trying to shove ahead, still a little short of the end zone. Now, he, when you're inside that five-yard line, that's when life gets tough. Yeah. You don't have a lot of room to work. You don't have a lot of room to play with to run the deep routes. So everything is compacted. So now your plays have to be short and compacted. You have to hit that quick slam or the quick run. The longer you try to stretch things out, sometimes it doesn't work out for you. Johnson and Williams again in the backfield, third and three from the three, but before that we'll have a timeout. Wagner Sally calling the timeout with just about 54 seconds, 55 seconds left, opening quarter. I think that was Coach Fox. It looked like Coach Fox started a, a sprint over there to the middle of the field to make sure he got that timeout called in time. He wanted to make sure that play didn't go. Whatever he saw out on that field, he didn't like it, whatever he saw. Well, it seems to be a battle, at least here in the opening quarter, Sly, of opposing running backs. We're now seeing Malik Williams coming to the forefront for Fox Creek, and on the other side for Wagner Sally. We've seen Kevin Jackson, the running back. He's been a, a big force so far tonight. It's really the Jackson and Williams show on the ground, and Malik Williams seems to be the guy that Fox Creek wants to continue to go with, especially in a goal line situation. I'm telling you, it seems like Williams is a little bit more of the powerful runner, a little bit more he lower his shoulder a little bit. So that's the guy you want to get too close to this goal line right here. But here, here's my thing about football now. Call me the old fuddy-duddy, the old cr crutch mudgeon or whatever you want to call me. <laughs> but whatever happened to the fullback? I, I need a fullback. When I'm, I'm inside the five-yard line, give me a fullback somewhere. Two tight ends and a fullback is what we need inside the five-yard line. Let's see what happens. Sly needs a fullback in his life. I'm telling there you. There you go. Well, third and three from the three. Fox Creek trying to tie this ball game up. 12-6 lead for Wagner Sally. Yeah, got some movement on Wagner Sally's side. And now you can't have that coming out of a timeout. If you're the offense, it is no way in the world. That is completely unexcusable to have an offsides out of the timeout. Can't have that out of the timeout. You have to be more disciplined than that. So this will obviously come at the benefit of Fox Creek, or rather, yeah, this is going to be called on Fox Creek, so the Predators will be pushed back a couple. So it's on the Predators that time for the movement out of the timeout. Still the same, or at least Jaden Johnson is still there. Johnson, he'll shove ahead, room. He's going to run into the end zone for the touchdown. Jaden Johnson extending that football, running straight ahead. We're all tied up. The QB does it for Fox Creek. Great job by the quarterback. He wanted to roll out right, but it wasn't there. Whoever's the left defensive end on that side for, for the War Eagles does a great job of contain. But now look at Jackson. He cuts back underneath and goes back to the left. Great job, great awareness by this young sophomore quarterback for the eight-yard run. You're going to see Jaden Johnson. He sees that pressure, picks it up, able to cut through as a couple of War Eagles went stumbling trying to catch Johnson. That true soft for Fox Creek waltzing in. 12 you know, all. Yeah. You know, we talked, you know, before before the game, I mean before the game on Wednesday. We talked to uh, Coach Stewart, and Coach Stewart said he had two quarterbacks, and he was confident in both quarterbacks. But it looks like Johnson is going to say, no, Coach, you got one quarterback. Yeah, Mike Adams has not made an appearance yet for Fox Creek, but Jane Johnson has been playing extremely well. Jackson Ray trying to get back an extra point that he missed out on earlier. And that one is up and good. 
So Ray gets the extra point. It is 13 to three, Fox oh. Creek over Wagner Sally. Some laundry on the field. Yep, you saw it, Sly. You know, this gets kind of confusing when you're back there. It looks like the referee picked up the flag. No. May have been, may have been a penalty against, Wag, against Wagner Sally. You know, it's hard, hard to, uh oh, personal foul? Yep. Uh -oh. Yep, personal foul running into the kicker. So they're gonna walk, they're gonna walk it up some on the kickoff. So the extra point obviously counts, and as you just mentioned, slide, that'll be to the benefit of Fox Creek here on the kickoff to make the field just a little bit longer for Wagner Sally. We'll keep it here with you for the next 45 seconds and change. We'll pause after the end of the first quarter, but yeah, here we go. We've already got 25 combined points. This is quite something so far. Big time offense out of both. I'm telling you, big time offense, and it's so we're still in the first quarter, man. You yeah. know, that's a great half. You know, some games that's a great game. True. 13-12, man. Four touchdowns already. Yeah, it's Fox Creek. Obviously, burners all over the field. Guys who can bolt and jet and move and cut. We've seen that already so far for Jaden Johnson who bolted to the end zone. Malik Williams has been feisty on the ground as Jackson Ray will set it up and get ready to boot it to Wagner Sally. But you know, physicality is, especially physicality up front will be key. That's one of the keys to the game that some uh, region pontificators had to say about keys to the game for really either side. Being big up front, the War Eagles menacing on both lines. Yeah, they are, but so far, Fox Creek ahead. And that one will bound over the end zone for a touchback. Oh my goodness, that leg on that young man. He's been, he's been doing all these pooch kicks early in the game. And this one, you know, they gave him the extra 15 yards on the penalty, put that thing out the back of the end zone. How about Jackson Ray coming back? Here it is again. This is after Ray made the boot. Not a chance for a return. Almost hitting right there at the cushion part of the goalposts and just having to watch it. Antonio Swedenberg, number three for Wagner Sally. Not a chance that time. Clock will roll again here in the first quarter. War Eagles down by just a point, 13 to three lead for Fox Creek. Yeah, looking for someone to give it to. It's handed off to Caleb Shaw. And Shaw taking it from Gage Starnes that time. Great job of closing stuff down on the outside. Malik Thomas, Malik Thomas, the, the junior, out there doing a great job for the Predators, making big plays. Thomas all over Shaw that time, able to search him out in the backfield. Second and 12 from the 18, 20 seconds to go first quarter. Probably looking at the final play before we take our first break tonight. Wagner Sally not hustling, probably content to have one more. And that one was almost dropped. It'll be an aired out ball that is almost intercepted. Big coverage that time on Antonio Swedenberg. And the stop made for Mason Tillman. Tillman was all over Swedenberg. Here it is again before we head to break, Sly. Look at Tillman out there on the coverage. I think he might have got away with a bump. Oh, yeah, he put a hand out there. He got away with a little bump, but it's still a great job of coverage by the young man. But if you're on that Wagner Sally side of the ball, you're, you're, you're questioning. <laughs> you're questioning that pass play right there. You're questioning that pass interference. Yeah, and there was a lot of physicality there as a result. You're going to see another look at it here. It's Gage Starnes. Starnes, the quarterback, number one for Wagner Sally, airing it out. His target all the way was Antonio Swedenberg, and there was Mason Tillman. And then you see Swedenberg there at the end, a couple of of little leaps and clearly possibly a lower leg injury or at least something knocked around that time for Swedenberg. He is receiving some attention on the field. We'll let that take place. We'll come back. We take our first break here on this Friday night, our first in-game break here on SUV TV. We'll come back. <laughs>
second quarter underway here from Lions Memorial Field in North Augusta, South Carolina. It's a 13-12 lead for Fox Creek over Wagner Sally, and the Predators making another nice play on defense out of the break, Sly. And, you know, I think the Predators are a little bit in energized on defense, you know, trying to turn it up, as the young folks say, trying to set that screen pass up, and a great job of reading the screen right there, not falling for the screen and going getting trapped upfield. Great job of reading the screen of the Fox Creek defense. Yeah, field was flipped that time. Didn't quite work out for Caleb Shaw. Shaw was met there by two Predators. Fourth down and uh-oh for Wagner Sally. So the War Eagles will punt this one away. Boot applied by Starnes. Fielded right at midfield. And some room was trying to get going there for Jatonius Butler, but didn't quite work out enough for Butler to continue his burst. Pretty good job of coverage. Pretty good job mm -hmm. of coverage by Wagner Sally. Look at it. He feels it on the bump, and he makes the first man miss. And as a kick returner, you always have to make that first man miss, and you hope the rest of your team can pick up everybody else. But great job of coverage. Great job of coverage by the War Eagles. So first and 10 from the 41. Fox Creek starting already past midfield. So a good chance here for the Predators. They get a nice round of applause and sound from the grandstands as they start their next drive. Uh, carry that time from Malik Williams that was aided by a couple of bumps and he picked up a couple extra. See, Malik is doing what I love to see a running back do. Look how he plants his foot, plant hard, and cut straight up the field. Straight up the field, straight on the line. Straight, as, shortest distance between two points, straight ahead. Yeah, going that way, the straight point that time was Malik Williams. Mm. Again, here's Williams. Williams with a hurdle move. He's pushed out at around a 15. That almost was an acrobatic trip to the end zone we have a flag we got a couple of flags on this play right here and here's the one that's going to hurt you the first flag look at this hold right here on the outside all of the all of the great job he does on the run is all negated by the hole now here's your late hits coming up bam <laughs> hey welcome i guess he wanted to get over there and talk to a couple of cheerleaders yeah he was uh <laughs> he was over there in a place that uh, you know, typically reserved for the cheerleading squad, pushed out there by Caleb Shaw. And you know, that was one number eight on the other that time to amount to a couple of penalty flags. And now waiting for the calls. And seeing a few of these, obviously, on Wagner Sally. The referees are right on top of it, man. You know, you love a good... A good, a good uh, officiating crew who can come out here and pick up, not try to dominate the game by throwing out needless flags, but throwing out the flags that matter. Right. You know, these obvious, there's some obvious penalties. Obvious penalties. That holding on one end was obvious and the late hit was obvious. So great job by the officiating crew. You know, Fox Creek is marching back, so number of Penalty flags that time, outnumbering on the side of Wagner Sally. And now Fox Creek will go ahead and make the long march back. So we're in our marching formation. It is football season after all. And this is the kind of marching that the guys on the field in red, white, and black like to do. Marching back and then take us back forwards. <laughs> Referee getting a little bit of exercise out there. Yeah, today. he's getting his uh, legs stretched, making sure he avoids the Charlie as well, I guess. <laughs> People forget the referees, they got to be hydrated too. They're out there just the same as the players. It's a physical job. You've got to move and make sure you're not in the way of a play, and then, oh, yeah, you still have to make the officiating call. whole lot that goes into being a man in black and white. First and 10 from the 28 with 10.28 to go here, second quarter. Jaden Johnson in the backfield is Malik Williams. Johnson will take it. Now he'll hand it to Williams. Williams is covered up right on the get-go. And the pressure applied that time by Jacob Schofield. 
And now here's a situation where you realize you got a sophomore quarterback. If he was an older quarterback, he would have audible out of this. That run play is nothing ever is going to happen on an inside run where you have a linebacker blitzing in the gap that you're supposed to run to. Now, once he gets a little bit older, he builds up the trust of his coach some. He'll be allowed to make an audible and not get his running back killed. As you've always said, Sly, we're seeing learning in the making here and players learning and figuring things out on the fly with every snap. It's Johnson, the backfield mate that time is Ryan Chavis. Chavis gets to about the 28, really just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. All right, now this is going to bring you up into a third and very long, third and about 11 or a long or a short 12, either way you want to look at it. Now, you want to see what what they put up top because what happened the last couple of times they ran those nine routes straight down the field and they ran it away from the one safety so let's see if they still stick with that man-to-man -man defense or they try to throw see if wagner sally tries to throw out a little bit of zone or give some type of pressure up the middle i guarantee somebody's coming up the middle for some pressure on this young quarterback ryan chavis and Jaden johnson will be in the backfield together after we get back to play following the timeout. Both teams have a chance to discuss things. It will be third and 11 from the 28-yard line with just about nine minutes to go here in the second quarter. Fox Creek ahead of Wagner Sally, 13 to 12. And that was one of the things that we were you know, looking to get into heading into this evening's matchup, looking at Wagner Sally and also at Fox Creek for Wagner Sally. We knew we would see Caleb Shaw, Elijah Davis, Kevin Jackson. We've seen all three of those so far and for Fox Creek, Tillman, and Jatonius Butler. We've seen Tillman on defense and Butler on offense making some uh, nice plays. And, of course, again, you know, you look at last season, 10-2 for Wagner Sally, 4-6 and six for Fox Creek. Wagner Sally, again, the team coming in you know, with the advantage, if you will, coming in from 2018. But Fox Creek got the victory in this matchup last season. And it was as close of a game towards the end as it is right now. We're seeing almost a repeat of 2018 between these uh, two teams, Sly. Mm -hmm. Both teams battling back and forth, battling back and forth. But what came down to last year, back to our keys of the game, don't beat yourself. Who's going to make that crucial turnover? Who's going to make that big mistake? That's what happens when you have two evenly matched teams. Yeah, that's what head coach Lafayette Stewart said about it. You got it, Sly. Came down to the third and fourth quarter, and they just had enough juice last Ooh. season. And a lot of early movement on the Fox Creek side. And that, that's another thing right there. You had some movement on the wagner Sally defensive line, but you also had the wide receivers take off on the Fox Creek side. Now, if you're a head coach, you cannot stand if your wide receivers get an offside penalty. The wide receivers shouldn't be listening to the snap count at all. The only thing the wide receivers should be doing is looking at the ball. So they're going to call it on the defense, so the wide receivers got bailed out on that one. Yeah, a lucky break for sure that time for Fox Creek. They're able to maintain some of their momentum on the call from the referee staff. Third and six from the 28, 9.04 to go. Second quarter, five-yard gain after the penalty. Oh. And this one is caught right over the top, flipped down at the 10-yard line. And that one was caught for Fox Creek. And you'll see the catch here for Chandler O'Bannon. Look at that pass. Look at the young man. Knows the contact's coming, jump past it, and throws a perfect strike. Just drops it right over the linebacker. We, we may be looking at something special in the next couple of years right here. Jaden Johnson is not playing like a sophomore. Caleb Shaw on the tackle that time. Johnson has a chance to not play like a sophomore mm. here. Here's the handoff. And again taken by Ryan Chavis. Big, big stick by Jatik Davis coming through the line at his linebacker spot, coming up and making the hit. You know, applying the pressure. Look at him come off the – come up right there. Boom, straight through, making the hit. Big play by Davis. You got to love a big defensive player, interior player like that, saying nobody can block me. First and 12 from the 12, a little under eight to go. Uh, Johnson has some time, and that one is caught right next to the pylon in the end zone. A picture-perfect pass to set up the score, and it's pulled in by Jatonius Butler. Jatonius Butler get the score. But look at the pass, the pass from that young sophomore. Look at him roll. That's just, I love the composure. He's great going to his right, great going to his strong side. Throws that ball, and look at the pass. 
beautiful pass in the corner of the end zone right there, the front corner. Yeah, so Jatonius Butler has a D2 offer in the uh, CIAA at Albany State. C.J. Tillman also has won a Division I offer to Presbyterian. Blake Sheely has a D2 offer at Limestone. And as we're discussing college prospects for the Fox Creek Predators after the Butler touchdown. So a penalty on the point after attempt. It's Fox Creek up 19 to 12. Trying to make it 20 to 12. They'll attempt the extra point again in the Guy with the big boot so far tonight, Jackson Ray, will have another go. Ray's been great tonight on kickoffs and extra points too. He's handled all facets. See if he's up to the challenge again. Ray takes it up and good. The holder, Michael Adams. Adams watching Ray punch it through for the extra point. It is 20 to 12. Fox Creek on top of Wagner Sally. Now that's a huge drive down the field by Fox Creek right there. Doesn't get much better than that. They mixed in the run. They had timely passing. They even had a few penalties to help them out toward the end. Now you got to see how the War Eagles respond. You know, you just got punched in the mouth. We'll see how you come back and respond to this one. There's Jatonius Butler taking it in from Jaden Johnson for the touchdown. That puts Fox Creek after the extra point. Up by eight points. Look at the cheerleaders on hand. Plenty of shirts being tossed up into the uh, grandstands tonight. They had some rally towels put down on the seats when we came in. I was tempted to pick one up and have a souvenir, but I felt like it would probably be better utilized by someone who's actually, you know, paying <laughs> to come into the game. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you. Hey, you know, Corey, I want to give a shout out to all our listeners, man. Yeah. Make sure all, everybody who's out there watching, make sure you tweet us. Let us know how good we sound. Let me know how good I look. Tweet us at SUVTV, at SUVTV. Make sure you can tweet us at SUVTV. Or, Corey, where can they tweet you at? Uh, you can find me at, at T-H-E underscore Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, Hodges, H-O-D-G-E-S. Or you can tweet me at Sly the Sports Guy. That's real easy, Sly the Sports Guy. We'd love to hear how we're doing. If you can tweet us now or tweet us tomorrow, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and congratulate Sly on his nice Sunday jacket, too. <laughs> I love it. Wagner Sally, they'll start at about the 35-yard line. Uh, down by eight, 20 to 12 lead for Fox Creek in a rematch of 2018. Here's another look. Those pooch kicks, now, I'm not a huge fan of the pooch kicks, but I understand what Coach Stewart is doing. Coach Stewart wants to keep that ball away from those returnmen. Those guys are dangerous back deep. Now, let's see what happens. Do they switch it up? Do Wagner Sally switch it up some and move their returnmen up to the second line? Let's see if that happens. Hopefully, but if you're a Wagner Sally fan, you say we don't want to. Hopefully, they won't kick off for the rest of the night anymore. Yeah, ideally, they're in a position where they can score a touchdown and get Ooh. it back. And here's a big push ahead. Uh, down on the field that time after the carry was Ethan Stroman. Stroman pulling out the truck stick on that one right there, low in the shoulder. I love it when the big running back delivers the boom. Don't wait to get hit. Go and hit somebody. Look at the big running back lower his shoulder. Welcome to high school football, young man. Right. Stroman. And one of those he met was Donovan Williams for Fox Creek. Eventually also coming in there on the tackle was Dawson Lewis, second and four from the 43. Still plenty of time left here before halftime. About a year or so removed from that big Fox Creek upset over North uh -oh. Augusta. This ball is loose. It's covered by Wagner Sally to avoid a turnover as Kevin Jackson leapt on it, but Fox Creek is applying the pressure. Now here's something right here. You said applying the pressure. Right here, bad snap over the return, I mean over the running back's head or to the to the running back's right. Here's the thing. I told you be careful of who makes the first mistake. Now you're putting Wagner Sally in a position that they're not too comfortable with. It is third and very long, about 15 or 16 yards. Now they have to pass the ball. It's a position that Wagner Sally isn't used to. Third and 15 from the 32. Oh, correct. Carry to the outside. Caleb Shaw. Shaw will get to the 50. Shaw cutting back past the 40 to the 30. Plenty of room and protection. Caleb Shaw will go to the end zone for the touchdown. And Wagner Sally responds with a big burst for number eight. 
Well, shows you what I know. <laughs> Show, shows you what I know. I said they had to pass the ball. He busts out a 68-yard touchdown run. <laughs> Look at Caleb Shaw go. We heard so much about Shaw in our conference call, middle of the week, from head coach Willie Fox. Watch Caleb. And we watched him go all the way to the end zone that time and scores for six. Here's how it all got started. And Shaw was backed up all the way over there towards the perimeter side of the field. Had to cut all the way back. But you know what? Look at the blocking downfield. The big lineman all the way downfield. You know, you want to give a big shout out to Philip Poole. Love to see a big lineman that far down the field. Look at Big 70 down the field. Who is also out there? Ryan Agro. Way downfield. Yeah, I saw Kevin Jackson as well. He was visible there in the first replay. We do have a player down for Wagner Sally, but it was Kevin Jackson who was seeing Shaw's run and then pointing straight ahead with a finger to the end zone. And up now on his feet is Philip Poole. Uh, the way he's walking, I think that may have been a Charlie Horse. The big man got down the field too far. Yeah, Poole was part of that last blocking play that allowed Shaw to get to the end zone. He's helped up, so the second time tonight we've seen a player assisted off the field and you know, hot temperatures, it's humid, especially in this part of the country and some of those weak one, two, three injuries that will occur. Remember, it's the AUGB ball game of the week here on SUV TV. Corey Hodges, Sylvester Williams, and the entire crew here with you tonight from Lions Memorial Field in North Augusta, South Carolina. Such a busy Friday night here in North Augusta. We'll talk about that in a moment. You know, Wagner, Sally. And they'll go ahead and score another two to complete it, to seal it off, if you will. Ethan Stroman, Stroman. So he gets that two-point conversion, and that is an eight-point push down the field that all started with number eight. Just that easy, you know. We talk about the young man, Caleb Shaw, and his athletic ability. We talked about him a lot in the pregame, and you're kind of just waiting for him to bust one out. And there you go, 68 yards on a third and 15, 68 yards on the reverse for a touchdown. It's going to go down in 68 yards in, in the uh, in the scores book, but he probably ran about 80, 80 to 100 yards on that run, man. That's a good point. If you add in that perimeter work that Caleb Shaw had to do to get free and then burst down the field, yeah, it could have been an 80-plusser there for Caleb Shaw. So with 6-12 to go here before halftime, it's – Hey, it's uh, right back to the joke that you made last week. It's 2020, perfect vision. Next year's date on the calendar is our score. I'm telling you, there you go, 2020. Be the first time for a long, first time in a long time. A lot of people will get to see 2020. That's it. We'll be grateful to see it. With every passing day, we continue to become more excited about our new product and everyone that makes SUV TV possible teaming up with Chad Cook and company to bring you the AUGV ball game of the week and really could not pick a better night this will probably be one of the most exciting nights of the year just because the holiday break is coming up as a result a turnout really for the year tonight everyone knows they're off tomorrow and Sunday but you get Labor Day Monday off as well so it's a perfect time to come out, enjoy some football. And for those of you joining us tonight, phone, tablet, laptop, hooking it up to your television in your living room, however you're doing it, we appreciate it. Certainly do. Fox Creek, the return on the way for Jatonius Butler. And Butler will push out to close to the 40-yard line. Now, this is a great job of the return team of getting the ball out. You know, I guess what's that, the 38, maybe 39-yard line. Ooh, one guy lost his footing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about uh, special teams coverage. If you're going down there, you're the first man down there, break down. You got to break down and make a tackle. Fox Creek starts at the 39-yard line, first and 10. Room outside, searching for more. Malik Williams. Williams finally brought down just past the 50. 
Williams is having an impressive game at running back. I love the combination. He's going inside. He's going outside. Look how he starts on the inside, doesn't see it there, and then he bounces it to the outside, and he keeps on bouncing outside. I like Malik Williams. I like the way he's running the ball tonight. So 5.37 to go before the break. All nodded, 20-20. Both teams now will head to their respective sidelines. After the timeout, it's 2A Fox Creek and 3A Wagner Sally on this Friday, playing right now to a tie. 40 combined points already on offense, and we're seeing the ground game working, but now the aerial game has also started to make a little bit of an appearance, and really both teams have momentum on their sides right now, and it's just been a well-played, crisp ball game so far. Mm -hmm. Well-played ball game. Hadn't had any turnovers. You had a few penalties here, you know, some holding, you know, a couple of offsides. But it's still a well-played ball game for an early season game. You know, both teams responding to being hit in the mouth. Both teams responding. Yeah, coming right back, it, it's really been a case of, you know, like one prize fighter going in and getting an uppercut to one. They come back and respond with a jab and a cross, and it's kind of what we've been seeing so far tonight, a great response. And got plenty of ball game left. Still five minutes in the first half, man. Plenty of ball game. Yeah, we may, uh, certainly Wagner Sally is looking like they may challenge their 46 put up last week in their week one opener and a 46 to two win. First action of the season for Fox Creek. This uh -oh. ball is lost. Who's on it? Wagner Sally football. War Eagles come up with a turnover. Looked like that was John T. Davis who came up with the T.O. Here's the replay. Mark this moment right here. Does he lose it on the handoff? Is it a bad handoff? Oh, uh, no, nah, it's a good handoff. He just didn't hold the ball in there. He didn't have it in there tight. Mark this moment right here, 532. 532. They're going to the first half. You have your first turnover. First turnover. So Malik Williams not able to fully control the football. And he had the look there, Sly. That's right. Nothing wrong with the handoff. Just lost it. Malik Williams did. A rare mistake there for number eight for Fox Creek. So Wagner Sally has the football, but tripped up in the backfield. Ethan Stroman. Fox Creek all over Stroman that time. All over him. Great job of defense right there by Fox Street Creek. Getting the penetration. Getting in the backfield. Look at the linebacker come in from his outside side and scoop him up by the legs right there to get that tackle. Who is that? Number 28 right there. Dawson Lewis. Great job by the junior making a play. It was a direct snap that time to Ethan Strom, and that's something that Fox Creek will also employ from time to time. They can go and direct snap it. Stepping back, Starnes, Ooh. and Starnes will air it out. And trying to put a hand up, Elijah Davis. Looks like everything is clean penalty-wise. Davis not able to reel it in. A little high that time. Stars, Stars have, has a cannon on him. You saw that pass, man. He threw that. He yeah. threw that pretty a tight spiral, long spiral down the field. Great, great pass. He just overthrew his man. Yeah, if you missed it, here it is again. Look how he steps into this thing. Mm. Yeah, pressure was coming there on Starnes as well. He got it away fairly cleanly. Target was Davis. You go back to that touchdown for Caleb Shaw that we saw a couple moments ago to get Wagner Sally back tied up after the two-point conversion was good for Stroman. He said, Caleb Shaw, this is Lafayette Stewart, has world-class speed. We saw it. Here's speed in the backfield, searching. Kevin Jackson. Jackson looking to the 20. He's at the 20. Now to the 15 and close to the 10-yard line. A big burst for Kevin Jackson. Kevin Jackson, beautiful run around the end. Beautiful run. Look at him get to the corner. And once he gets to the corner, it's all about speed. He has a man out there blocking in front of him. Look at Ethan Stroman just threw a great pass. Now he goes out there and throws a good block. <laughs> Does a little bit of it all. Kevin Jackson was finally wrangled down before he had a chance to get another 10, which would have given Wagner Sally two scores in a row. First and 10 from the 12-yard line. About four minutes left here before the intermission break. 
Starnes in the backfield along with Kevin Jackson. Jackson will take it on a direct snap. Jackson shoving ahead. He'll come up short of the end zone, but piling ahead that time, number six, Kevin Jackson. Player down for Wagner Sally. Yeah, it's the same same young man, Philip Poole's down again. And I, I definitely think that's Charlie Horse time right there because the way he went down, yeah, did you saw he got back up for is he grabbing the back of that leg? See now as Poole gets some help off mm -hmm. the field. Looks like he is at least favoring one leg. Walks off probably about 85, 90% under his own power. So again, Philip Poole, the senior offensive lineman, defensive lineman for Wagner Sally, comes off. It'll be second and two from the four yard line for the War Eagles. 2020 all tied up. Wagner Sally trying to get the lead back. Again, it'll look to be Gage Starnes at quarterback with Kevin Jackson alongside. Second and two from the four yard line for the War Eagles. Jackson takes it and Kevin Jackson will push ahead for the touchdown. Kevin Jackson is in again. Puts up six points for the War Eagles. It's now 26 to 20, Wagner Sally. Strictly just getting behind your blockers and just falling your way in the end zone. And that's nothing but the Wagner Sally offensive line saying, hey, we're bigger and tougher than the Fox Creek defensive line. That's just straight ahead, nothing fancy, run straight at your football. So Jackson, who was one of the ones highlighted as a key player to watch for Wagner Sally, certainly living up to that. And all of the uh, pregame notes on Kevin Jackson were reading those beforehand and they're all coming true for their predictions. Wagner Sally again trying to go for the extra two points. The ball is loose and Fox Creek will burst out. Finally, we hear a whistle. The crowd was ready to possibly celebrate an 85, 90 plus yard return that was almost taken out by Quincy Wells. But Wells, hears the whistle and he'll come back. Yep, big man thought he had something getting down the field, but a great job, a way to step up by the Fox Creek, Fox Creek defensive line. You know, ball popped out of there. Referee blew it dead. Mm -hmm. They won't let us big men shine. They won't let us shine, Corey. Yeah, you don't get a chance to come back for the uh, Dallas Cowboys-esque <laughs> touchdown in the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's, uh, you're right there. Everyone loves it when the, when the big guy gets to have fun and gets into the end zone. Wagner Sally up by six points over Fox Creek. That last touchdown for Kevin Jackson. Getting the lead back to the War Eagles. Both teams will talk it over and we're working down into that part of the ball game now to where it seems like the momentum is trying to possibly shift towards Wagner Sally. That run game has been working and now it's working in you know, short yardage type situations. They're able to hunt out some more room. And uh, But the thing is live, Fox Creek, obviously with their offense the way it has been so far, this is not a blowout by any stretch of the imagination. Nah, it's just a nice back and forth battle. You know, you have the thing about Fox Creek, it seems like when Fox Creek's on defense, they'll hold Wagner Sally for two plays, three plays, and then Wagner, Wagner Sally busts a big run to open things up and get right down there on the goal line, and Wagner Sally punches it in. Fox Creek has more of a deliberate method going down the field. Gage Starnes will roll one up. It's lost momentarily and recovered by Noah Barnett for Fox Creek. And that just gets bad to worse. It, get, it goes from bad to worse right there on that play. You had your returner fumble the ball. He has to catch that one right there. One hand, he has to scoop that up and run. But not only do you have him losing yards on the return, you got a block in the back. You got a flag coming up here, and they're going to push that back even further. Weston Williams was on Noah Barnett, and now with the flag. It'll be a long field coming up for Fox Creek. As the sticks are moved. And now this is a situation where you get nervous about your young quarterback. 
is going to be first and 10, and I think the ball will be inside the 10-yard line. So now you get a little nervous about a young quarterback in a shotgun, and we've seen some high snaps, some wide snaps from the Fox Creek Center. Some have been a little hot from the center to Jaden Johnson so far. For the most part, he's been able to handle it, but yeah, a long field and backed up close to your own end zone always seems to exacerbate some problems, especially for a sophomore quarterback. Not playing like a sophomore so far tonight, Jaden Johnson. Now that one almost lost. It was lost. It was recovered at the last moment. Johnson was trying to scramble out of trouble and getting it to reliable Noah Barnett. And see, here's the thing. If you're a receiver catching that play, that little swing route, that is a live ball. He's throwing that ball behind the pat line of scrimmage. That is live. That, that running back has to get on top of that. He has to catch that ball. Rule number one, he has to catch it. And if he doesn't catch it, he has to get on top of that. Great job of being heads up, not only from the offense, but from the defensive guys of knowing that that ball was live. Rather, that was Jatonius Butler that time who had to catch it quick from Johnson. Well, now Jaden Johnson and Fox Creek right into the end zone, just trying to find a way out. They are able to do so with some crafty moves from Malik Williams, just trying to get out of the house. Wagner Sally. Did he make it out? Wagner Sally motioning for the safety. It's third down and 18 to go for Fox Creek. So avoiding two that time. Now, Corey, I'm an old riverboat gambler. Right here, we're all the way in the end zone. I say, why not go out the shotgun, send everybody deep? Let's just throw it. Because you know Wagner Sally's coming. They're bringing the pressure. Well, we're on the Savannah River. We're on the banks of the Savannah River. Maybe time to put all the chips down and parlay it into something on a Friday. But before that, we'll have a penalty announced. You can always use offsides. That always helps out the offense. That'll chop into that deficit a little. See, right now that defensive line, they know where they're at. They knew the position they're in, and these guys are chomping at the bit. But you got to be a little bit more disciplined than that. So two minutes to go before the halftime break. 26-20, Wagner Sally on top. Down in distance a little bit more manageable now. Third and 13 for Fox Creek. Johnson with time, an escape move. He's able to get that one off. It is complete and caught Noah Barnett. Or rather, that was Malik Williams who caught it. Ethan Stroman on a good sure-handed tackle on the outside. I like the ball, though, that this young kid, Jaden Johnson, is throwing. I do like the passes that he's getting off. He's in back and deep in his end zone. Nice, safe pass to the outside. And they pick up about four, you know, four, maybe five yards. Now the punter has a little bit of room to work with. Fourth down. Fox Creek will boot it away. Jackson Ray. Oh. But Ray, that one will fly all the way over his head and helmet. Not a chance that time for Ray to get a boot on it. Unless that's Shaquille O'Neal back there punting. That's not going to work, Senator. <laughs> That's not going to work way over his head. And that's a safety. Now that is huge. That is huge. It's an eight-point lead. Eight-point lead. And you have, even though Wagner Sally doesn't throw the ball, they still have a quick hitting offense. They can cover a lot of ground really quick in this last minute. Yeah, whether it's Kevin Jackson or Caleb Shaw, we've seen the run game come alive. You get a look there at Lafayette Stewart and his Fox Creek Predators. Yeah, they'll be uh, looking towards the halftime break. Coach Stewart and his Fox Creek team to try to get a couple of things sorted out. They've started out with a burst, kept right up with Wagner Sally, but then the War Eagles on the strength of a Couple nice runs, Kevin Jackson and Caleb Shaw for touchdowns. And now the War Eagles lead by eight after that safety on a ball that flew over the head of Jackson Ray, kicker for Fox Creek, resulting in two. So it'll be about 56 seconds left before the halftime break. So not a whole lot of time here for Wagner Sally to 
try to burst, but as Sly just mentioned, they've been quick enough and swift enough so far Have the War Eagles. 56 seconds could be almost like two minutes and 56 seconds. Ball in the air. It'll bound to the 30. Picked up. Turn on the way. Room outside. And finally pushed out is Caleb Shaw. You just saw a good example of why Fox Creek has been pooch, pooch kicking all the kickoffs. Trying to get it out of Caleb Shaw's hand. You don't want it in this young man's hand. You know, look at the control he has, man. Look at, the, you know, to plant his foot and cut back and go back up that sideline. Great athlete, this young man, Caleb Shaw. Yeah, good call there, Sly. You're right. Just trying to keep that away from Shaw. If he has a chance with some open field and room to contort and maneuver, he could burn you big time, especially when you're punting or kicking off to him. So to take that ball out of the air and just bound it up the middle like a chip shot, you know, making things a little bit tougher on Caleb Shaw. Again, trying to alleviate any opportunity for Wagner Sally. Ooh. Run on the way, a pretty good one too. Out to the sidelines, Antonio Swedenberg. Swedenberg able to stay inside before he's pushed out. You know, great thing what Swedenberg did. You know, e even in high school, the clock stops after you get a first down, but he still managed to get out of bounds to stop the clock even further. Great job by Swedenberg of getting picking up the big game and getting out of bounds. So, first and 10 from the 17 for Wagner Sally after the timeout that Fox Creek calls. So here you go, you just saw that big push there for Swedenberg and that took out that chunk of, art, uh, chunk of yardage you were speaking of slide to where now Wagner Sally is right there where they've been, albeit closer than they were when they got those running touchdowns for Jackson and, and Caleb Shaw. But now they're in position again. Mm -hmm. Now they're in position one more time, right down here, hoping to get a quick score to pad onto this lead going into the half because uh, I think Fox Creek gets the ball um, uh, coming back out to start the half. So right. if you are Wagner Sally, this is what you want right here. You want to get in this end zone right before halftime. A chance here to make this possibly 34 to 20 with a touchdown for Wagner Sally. It would make certainly a big difference going in with what really is, after two extra points, a two touchdown lead. Of course, it hasn't happened yet, but the War Eagles with an opportunity to go into the locker room possibly up by double digits, up by eight at the moment. Just 40 seconds left, but time for Wagner Sally. First and 10 from the 17. Again, it's Starnes. Empty backfield for Starnes. Starnes, a low toss, it's caught. Swedenberg again, the oh. target, oof. And Swedenberg able to get out of a little bit of trouble. He was moving to the end zone. Did he get in for the touchdown? I think they gave it to him. It I think is. he got in. It's good. Antonio Swedenberg. We need a replay for sure. Here it is. Oh, he was down. He was. Oh, they got away with one. Yeah, Swedenberg, it looked like a knee for sure was down. He, he got away with one. He got up and then knocked down the pylon for the score. Look, look at that knee. Yeah, that knee hit the ground on that one. Yeah, that definitely looked like the knee was down for Antonio Swedenberg. The touchdown stands. And that's a case of if someone was able to look at our replay like they do in college football and the NFL, that would have certainly been taken away. But as it is, a close call, close to the ground for Swedenberg. Gets some extra life, scores a touchdown, and now a two-point conversion is good. Ryan's our grow to make it 36 to 20. Here it is again, Antonio Swedenberg from Gage Starnes. By all intents and purposes, Swedenberg's knee was down. But you know what, here's the thing. If you're an offensive player, you play into the whistle. Defensive players, you play into the whistle. If the referee doesn't blow that whistle, the ball is still alive. You cannot stop. Great job of just awareness by Swedenberg to keep on going. You know, for someone like Swedenberg, a junior, that's some of that experience coming to the surface for sure because I know so many players slide and, and you can't blame them. 
would be in a position to where they're down low, they feel maybe the knee touch, and they think that's it, this is over, and they give up on it. Not Antonio Swedenberg, as you see, he continued it all the way home. There you go. And you know, one thing we found out a little bit of information about this Wagner Sally team, you know, they're used to playing with each other and they're also used to winning. We just found, I just found out that this team, they've played together since middle school. They actually went undefeated as eighth graders. They went 10 and 0 in their middle school league. They were 10 and 0. So now you have a team that's used to winning. You have a team that's used to competing. That all helps out. Starnes will boot it, but a whistle. You know, under half a minute to go before halftime. We'll... It's going to be on Fox Creek that time, so. Wagner Sally will go again with the kickoff after their touchdown. So again, we'll, once we reach halftime, we'll step aside and then we'll come back and have our halftime thoughts here on SUV TV. An exciting, action-packed first half, about an hour and 15 minutes in, and already 56 points combined on the board. 56 points <laughs> here in the first half. You know, I expect a great offense, but I didn't expect this much. <laughs> Not at all, as Wagner, Sally, and look at the 46 points from last week that they put up in that victory. They're only 10 away from going 46, at least 46 in their first two games of the season in terms of offensive point output. The Starnes, the rest of the special teams unit again coming back. Looks like we're going to have to try this for a third time. They so keep on trying, eventually we'll get it right, huh? Yeah, third time's the charm. Well, Starnes went over. Had a chat or two. Now he'll go back and place the stand in the ground, put the pigskin on top of it. Now Starnes will try again for the third time here to get this football back to Fox Creek. And that one's a squibber up the middle. It took a bad little bounce. Fox Creek is able to hop on it. Quite Malik Williams that time getting in on it, it was. Now here's the thing, it's 28 seconds to go in the first half. If you're Fox Creek, you're gonna get the ball back. But you have a young sophomore quarterback. Do you take a chance at the end zone? Me, I love the way this young guy's playing. I, I, why not? Let's go and air it out a couple of times and see what happens. Yeah, Jaden Johnson, you see Johnson there. Quarterback number five for Fox Creek. He's been electric so far through the air. He has the ability to dial up a deep ball. You see if he exercises that ability, takes advantage of it here with under 30 seconds to go. Before the halftime break, Johnson back, pressure coming, and Jaden Johnson will get out of one tackle. He's got another almost right there on his back. He'll slide. It was Elijah Davis who was behind Jaden Johnson. Johnson kept control of the football. Now here's the thing, once he gets a little bit older, he'll realize now when he breaks contain, right there, right there, he's getting to the outside, nothing's opening, throw that thing, to, throw, it, throw it all the way in the stands if you want. You know, give an opposing team a souvenir. You got to get rid of that ball right there. You're fighting to preserve the clock and to preserve your health. <laughs> that's right, and that's really the second time tonight that you've highlighted that for Jaden Johnson, and both times it was warranted. You're right, Sly, because he's been in a pressure situation to where sometimes maybe the prudent play would be to go ahead and get rid of that football. Mm -hmm. Right here, as soon as you lose, as soon as you lose it right there, this is when you just throw it away, throw it in the out of, throw it out of bounds, give somebody a souvenir in the stands. Yeah, there's been a whole lot of souvenirs tossed into the grandstands tonight, and as we mentioned, plenty of freebies on hand, t-shirts and rally towels. And could have gotten a football that time from Jaden Johnson, but a nice move though for Johnson to slide and, and uh, live to fight another down, as they say. Just nine seconds left before our intermission period. So Johnson, Fox Creek will come back out. Probably time here for just one more play.
Johnson in the backfield along with looks like Gentonius Butler. It is Butler back there. He and Johnson talking before the snap, making sure everything's ready. One last chance here for Fox Creek before halftime. Johnson now will send a man in motion. It's Bryson Johnson, Jaden Johnson rolling out. Room to the 50, now to the 40. He'll go out of bounds at about the 45 yard line with one and a half seconds left. There you got one second left on the clock. Let's test out the young man's arm. See, see, see how hard, see how far he can chunk it. See if he can chunk it in the end zone. Great job of getting to the outside and then realizing that clock and getting out of bounds. Went out at about the 36, right at the 36. First and 10 from the 36. Only one tick left. Johnson gets a tap on the helmet from Gentonius Butler. In that NASCAR set, if you will, that big wide out package, getting all those wide receivers ready. Johnson airs it out down the field. That one broken up, but the target, Noah Barnett. Barnett almost had a chance. He was surrounded by two for Wagner Sally Sly. Great job of coverage. Great job of coverage over there. Here's the ball from Johnson. And did they have 11 players on the field? I think Fox Creek might have had 10. I'm, I'm looking, and they had three receivers to the top, one receiver at the bottom, yeah, it looks like 10 to me. You just had 10 players on the field. You, wow. You, you're, fighting a, you're fighting an uphill battle. That's right. The magnificent 10 that time almost came up with a touchdown, but Noah Barnett, it was deflected. One of those getting involved that time for Wagner Sally was Roderick Williams. Well, that's halftime. We've got 15 minutes of halftime. We'll step aside, come back on SUV TV for halftime thoughts at the break. It's 36 to 20, Wagner Sally over Fox Creek. What is it about some places? The places where we feel a sense of fellowship, where service is of the highest priority, whether to each other or to ourselves, a journey familiar like a warm bath for the soul. Along the way we may get lost, but we always seem to find a friendly hand reaching out, guiding us the way back there, where we owe it to our younger selves, just to feel like we're getting a little bit better at us. This place will always be there for you. This place is sacred, because this place is home.
We return back here on SUV TV. Corey Hodges, Sylvester Williams here with you. What an electric first half we saw, Sly, with 56 combined points on the board. Wagner Sally into halftime, into the locker room right now, leading by 16 points. It seemed like the War Eagles really started to get the ground game going, started to push ahead into the end zone, and they are the ones with the momentum heading into halftime. But Fox Creek has been uh, holding right in there, hanging right in there. We almost saw Jaden Johnson dialed up to uh, one of his receivers in the end zone for a late touchdown before the break. Fox Creek is not out of this game. Even down by 16, they are playing very well. They're playing very well. And speaking of playing very well, it all starts with your quarterback. Anytime you want to be a successful team, you need to have a great quarterback. It starts right there. And look at the pass. Look at the young man just step into that one and throw that one dead on the dime. That's what he's been doing all game. But here's the problem. As well as he's playing, the Fox Creek defense is playing just the opposite side because Wagner Sally is having everything they want. They're giving it to him however they want. Wagner Sally is taking it, and Wagner Sally is pounding it. Look at the running backs right here. Coming straight to the outside, boom, untouched. That's how you run if you're an a great offensive squad. And Wagner Sally has high hopes this year. They're expected to compete for the state championship in 1A ball, and they're going out here, and their offense is showing that they're going to compete for the state championship in 1A ball. Certainly so. You saw Kevin Jackson there wearing number six for Wagner Sally. He got the rushing touchdown. So that really started off somewhat of a trend. It was Kevin Jackson very early on slide for Wagner Sally, you know, pounding that ball, running it quite a bit. Then we saw Fox Creek. They were more, uh, more on the ground themselves. Then they started to kind of play around with that aerial ball. That kept them in the game for a while, but then it started to turn. Again, it's really been big stuff on the ground. Caleb Shaw had a big burst to the end zone for Wagner Sally. We saw that one for uh, Kevin Jackson as well. And then we've also seen the, some of the usual suspects. Elijah Davis has been popping up so far for Wagner Sally. And also when you see Starnes, the uh, quarterback for Wagner Sally, Gage Starnes, he has also been um, pretty good inside the pocket. I'm telling you, it's a great team offense from Wagner Sally. That old single wing, the shotgun, the direct snap offense for Wagner Sally. Everybody's getting involved. Everybody gets a chance to touch the rock, and they're all capitalizing when they get a chance to touch the rock. Wagner Sally, well-balanced team. And once again, this is one of the reasons they are favored or one of the teams that are favorite to compete for that 1A state championship this year. Yeah, it seems like that some of that is going to run through these teams. Fox Creek for sure, when you look at their classification and you know a battle of 3A and 2A tonight, Wagner Sally and Fox Creek respectively. We're looking here at Jaden Johnson, the quarterback for Fox Creek. He is He's had a good touch on that ball tonight, the deep ball. He's also been good at that RPO, run pass option. Mm -hmm. yeah. That run pass option, look at him getting to the outside, maintaining his composure, and then he'll take it and cut it upfield and try to go to the touchdown or be smart enough to get out of bounds and get and get out of bounds and save clock. It's hard to believe this young guy is a sophomore. That's what I, I'm just, they, they told me before the game, he's a sophomore. And it's kind of hard to believe he's, he's having an impressive game at the quarterback spot. I agree, yeah. You're looking at some of these plays for Jaden Johnson, uh, the ability to get out of trouble. You see it there with some of the pressure. You know, he got out of one tackle there, almost got taken down by Weston Williams. He got out of it. You see Williams there trying to wrangle him. Johnson able to get back up. This is highlighting, though, one moment, though, or a couple moments that I know you've pinpointed slide in the first half for Johnson. Just in those situations, maybe better to get rid of that football. Yeah. Especially that play right there. That right. particular play right there, you were getting close to the end of the half. He was rolling to the outside. As he gets old, he mm -hmm. gets a little bit more experience under his belt. He'll understand if I'm rolling to the outside like that, the clock is my enemy. Let's just go ahead and throw this thing away and restart. Because all you do, you pick up a two-yard game. Right. And you got to get 60 yards within 20 seconds to get to the end, of, get to the end zone. Right. So that two yards is not going to do much for you. No, and uh, that's something that I'm sure maybe we'll see Jaden Johnson improve on in the second half. We'll get to see both teams again, obviously, for their full uh, dose of football. And from what we've seen already in the first half, a whole lot of offense. We're probably expecting to see more of the same, but I think it will be interesting. One last thought before we head to break. It will be interesting, I'm sure, and you would agree, Sly, for Fox Creek to try to come out with something, some type of score, to get back a little bit closer. You have to get Mr. Momentum back on your side because right now, Mr. Momentum, he's a war eagle. He is yep. a war eagle, true and tr pride and true. He is a war eagle right now. And if you're Wagner Sally, 
you know Fox Creek is going to try to give you the best thing they have coming out of the half. If you're Wagner Sally, now is the time, and I love to use this, now is the time to punch Fox Creek in the mouth. That's now right. is the time to go ahead and shut that door and let them know, hey, sorry, we're going to ruin this home opener for you tonight. Yeah, and this is the chance, and it will be the chance for Wagner Sally once they come out of halftime to try and do just that. Up by 16, trying to make it more. We'll see what Fox Creek has in response to Fox Creek, the pride of Fox Creek High School, the marching band out on the field with their performance here at the break. You see them uh, heading back onto the sidelines now after a good performance for the nice crowd here on a Friday night. Uh, we'll step aside and come back, continue along with some uh, halftime thoughts, get you ready for the second half. It's the AUG B-Ball Game of the Week from North Augusta, South Carolina, Fox Creek, Wagner, Sally. We'll come back.
we return just about a half minute to go before we get the second half underway. Corey Hodges, Sylvester Williams here with you on SUV TV. It's the AUG B-Ball Game of the Week, powered by SUV TV. The Wagner Sally War Eagles and the Fox Creek Predators. It's Wagner Sally leading 36 to 20 here at halftime. And Sly, here we go again, ready for what promises to be another energetic second half. If we see the same amount of points put up in the second half as we did in the first half, my friend, we could be seeing a scoreboard buster. I'm telling you, man, a lot of exciting offense coming out here tonight. But here we have it. The most important game, most important possession in the game. The first possession of the second half. The most important possession of the game for either side of the ball. Let's see what happened with these young men on this possession right here. And so it'll be the start of 12 minutes here in the third quarter. Well, Wagner Sally certainly going into the halftime break with the momentum. Now it'll be up to Fox Creek to try to get back to how they were playing. Uh, really the early portions of the first quarter. Most of that first quarter able to hang with the War Eagles. It really was a story in this game right now is a story of the, the last five or six minutes before the halftime break is what has made a little bit of the difference right now for the War Eagles. But you've seen enough promising stuff out of Jaden Johnson for Fox Creek and company and Malik Williams for sure to still give hope for the home team here at Lions Memorial Field and that the Fox Creek Predators will have a chance to nibble into this deficit a little bit. Yep, see if they can cut in. It's, you know, the thing about chopping down a tree, you can't take it down with one swing. You got to chop it down. Rome wasn't built in a day and that kind of thing. That's it. Michael Adams is set to return. And it was Adams, but instead the returner for Fox Creek will be Dewan Miles. Now that's a great, great, great open field tackle right there. Who is that? Dalton Jeffcoat, a sophomore. Sophomore came in there and made the great tackle. Look at a way to wrap up. Wrap up, bring his man all the way down to the ground. Good job by that young, young War Eagle over there. So it'll be uh, first and 10 from the 32 yard line. Fox Creek with control. Jaden Johnson, he dropped the football. It's recovered by Williams, but Williams is summarily pounced on. Now you do not want to start your second half like that with a fumble. Right. That's the last thing you want. Quarterback wanted to turn before he caught the ball. But here's the thing. You have to catch the ball first. Then everything else happens after that. Second and 10. No gain on the play that time from the 27. Fox Creek staring up at a 16-point advantage for Wagner Sally. Remember the big win over North Augusta. About a year removed from that back on August the 24th of 2018. A 19 to 12 win. Johnson will keep it. Now he'll toss. That one is caught sliding down after the catch. Noah Barnett. I like how he moves. I like how he moves to the outside and throws that ball on the run. You know, that's a great safe pass right there. You run a little eight yard out and he hits him right there. He threw it a little bit behind him. Now, if you get that one in front of him, your, your wide receiver is standing and he can make a move and get upfield. But that's a great safe pass to get you about seven yards. Third and eight from 27. Johnson with one in the backfield. That is Malik Williams. Johnson now will get Williams to maneuver to his other hip. Now back. Johnson ready. A little bit of a high snap, caught it cleanly though. Pass is complete. Oh, Look at his feet. Look at his feet. Look at the receiver playing his toes. Noah Barnett. Here it is again. Look at the concentration right there. Look at him plant. Great job. Boom. Both feet in bounds. That's, a, that's an NFL catch. That is. Yeah, swift move here for Barnett. We'll see it. The catch and then a sly mentioned and pinpointed both feet like sticky glue and super glue down on the ground. Mm. And carry ahead, not much going that time for Williams. Yep. Couldn't pick up much on that no. run. 
But you know what, Corey? I'm still kind of stuck on that last pass play. That pass play right there, that 10 yard out, that's, called, that's a pro pass right there. That's called a combine pass. What happens when they run in the combine, they run routes, they test the quarterback on the 10 yard out. If you can make that play count, if you can make that pass count, that gets you to the next level. I know, I know it's two plays ago, but I'm still hey, kind of stuck on that pass. It certainly was a next-level play there for Noah Barnett. That was crisp to get up high and then to come down and plant both feet and do it without stepping out of bounds or hurting anything down there in the lower part of the body. First and 10 from the 42 for Fox Creek. Williams, backfield, Jaden Johnson. Johnson has it. Johnson will air it out, but a trip. Barnett tripped flag. Yeah, yeah. Feet, feet got, got tangled up on that one, and that's going to be a pass interference every day of the week. E every day of the week, that's always a pass interference. Good call. Here it is. Jaden Johnson, that arm is something oh. that shows up from time to time. Uh, for Wagner Sally, that was Kevin Jackson defending on the play. And it looks like that. Wagner Sally will be the beneficiary of this call. Oh. Not ruled interference on the play. There's another angle. Noah Barnett. Because, because I think his feet just got tangled up. I don't think he, he, I don't think it was pass interference. I just think his feet got tangled on the play, you know? Could have been a case of just the, of how wild that move was. Maybe mm -hmm. that's what resulted in the yellow. Second and 10 from the 42. Jaden Johnson, Johnson will keep it on his own. Johnson out to the 50 yard line and then some, out to about the 45. I'm getting tired of saying this, but he, this kid is not playing like no. he's 15 years old. He's good. It's been impressive so far. Look at the form. And instead of getting outside, trying to run outside of the tackles, he steps up in the pocket. Got to make that tackle in the open field, though. You need your linebackers to make that tackle to stop that first down. Johnson finally curtailed by Antonio Swedenberg, who got a touchdown that was unadulterated defensively by Fox Creek back in the first half, but Swedenberg had a knee down. He still got to go in for the touchdown. So really, we're looking at a game that really should be 30 to 20. If you take away the, if you keep the, take away the two points, it actually should be 28 to 20. Jaden Johnson, a pump fake. Johnson will spin out of a tackle. He'll get to the 30-yard line, almost to the 25. This young man's electric. He is electric, rolling outside of that rolling outside of that pocket, not going down with the arm tackle. You know, he's a skinny guy. He's a slight guy, but he's a lot tougher than his frame looks. Look at that. He takes the contact, spins off of it, and picks up another 10 yards, man. That is impressive by this young kid. He took the hit from Ethan Stroman for Wagner Sally. Didn't phase him. Jaden Johnson. He's got Fox Creek slide down to about the, well, right at the 28 yard line in driving. So a lot of conversations going on down there with the referees trying to figure out what's the hold up. See Johnson, he's ready to go. And I think we got a timeout, maybe. Yeah. You know what? And, and and I heard somebody in the press book press booth say they're gassed, yeah. and that's a, that's a good job of trying to hold up hold up the momentum, slow up a little bit so your team can catch their breath. A little bit of coaching strategy over there. Yeah, this has been a, a big drive here for Fox Creek mm -hmm. and Wagner Sally. Coach Fox out there earning his money. You that's know? it. Coaching, making sure the guys get a couple extra. Breaths almost got contained and then a breakout to the 20 yard line. Still on his feet, a hurdle move down to almost the 10 yard line. What a move that time for Malik Williams. That's the second time Malik went up high, right? <laughs> Malik, might, you might have found your, your, your 110 meter hurdle out here tonight. Yeah, this is almost like the electric camel uh, move. You're getting up and then taking a ride and up. Malik Williams, hurdle, and some heart too. First and 10 from the 15, pass to the end zone, caught. Is that in for the score? No. He's gonna call him out of bounds. But that's an incomplete pass. 
but I like it because he throws it to one point on the field. He throws it, it's either going to be an incomplete pass or a touchdown. That's a great way to throw that ball. He just threw it a little too wide. You saw his feet. He was almost there. He was almost there. I'll take that. You know, of course I want the touchdown if, you know, if you're Fox Creek. But even if you're Wagner Sally, that's great defense by Wagner Sally using the sideline as an extra defender. That's a great play all around. Noah Barnett almost cashed in for six. Johnson will target, gun again. That one caught and then right down in the midst of a couple of Wagner Sally players. Look like Jatonius Butler. Yes, sir. He threw, he threw a bullet on the inside right there. That crossing route, the most dangerous route in all of football. Yeah. <laughs> throwing a crossing route up high. You do not make friends. The quarterback does not make friends throwing that pass. Yeah, Butler met by a trio, possibly a musical quartet. Hand off Malik Williams. Williams trying to find some space. The ball popped out, but I think they're going to call him down. That ball kind of skirted out yeah. of there, you know. Got to be careful on that. You see Williams coming out. Williams will take a spell. In now Ryan Chavis. Chavis comes in as the running back. It'll be fourth down and four. Goal line now from the eight-yard line. 6-10 to go, third quarter. Fox Creek down by 16, but trying to get six. Wagner. Wagner Sally will take a timeout. You know, one thing I like about Coach Fox, when Coach Fox calls a timeout, he, he's, he's about 15 yards onto the field, making sure the referees see that I'm calling the timeout. Willie Fox running out there very demonstratively to come on and make sure that the referees knew Wagner Sally needed another break. So we've seen a lot here over the last couple of minutes. It's all boiled down into the fact that we've gone almost now six full minutes and Wagner Sally has not been able to touch the ball on offense. It's been all Fox Creek. They've been chewing up the clock, and now they're in a position, as you see head coach Willie Fox for Wagner Sally, discussing things with his young men. And uh, Fox Creek has a chance here, Sly, to get a touchdown that could cut this to a 10-point lead for Wagner Sally. Mm -hmm. And this, this is a huge play right here, fourth, fourth and four. You still have a chance to get a first down. You have a chance to get a first down because the ball's on the eight-yard line. So you want to break over the five, just a little bit over over the five, and, and you'll have the first down. But you're so close to the end zone, I'm pretty sure in the mind of Fox Creek, these guys will say, hey, man, we're going to make this thing to the end zone. That's where all eyes are trained right now for the Predators. Fourth and four from the eight, as Sly just mentioned, can pick up a first down here, which would extend the drive from short territory. Again, it is Chavis into the backfield along with Johnson. Johnson rolling out. He'll toss it Ooh. to Chavis, and Ryan Chavis almost had a chance to pull it in. He drops it. Hey, you want to give a lot of credit on that play to Jeremiah Bynum, the outside linebacker applying pressure. Look at him coming off the edge. He blitzed straight up the middle. I mean, blitzed straight off the tackle and applied pressure, and that forced the short pass. That was a great job by the linebacker of coming in there and applying pressure. Hey, Corey, pressure's going to do two things. It's going to make diamonds or it's going to bust pipes. That's right. <laughs> At that time, it was a little bit of a bust that time for Chavis. He was so close to pulling that football in. That was um, Schofield that time. It's Kobe Schofield who came in on the tackle. And now you got to look at Wagner Sally. Now back on the eight-yard line, you know, uh, some teams would get nervous in a situation like this. But Wagner Sally, they're used to running that ball, and they run it hard. It doesn't matter who touches it. So let's see what happens. We've seen Fox Creek in this position so uh, earlier in the night. That time, it's Gage Starnes, quarterback for the War Eagles, who takes it on his own, just trying to get out of the territory of the end zone, the shadow of the end zone, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know, nice, safe play, running up, running underneath behind that massive offensive line you got there. You got some big space eaters up front, you know, just running on up straight up the middle. Give yourself some room. You know, pick up three yards. Three yards in a cloud of dust. Second and seven from the 13 for Wagner Sally. Mention how busy of a night it is here on this Friday, especially just in this general area. We've got quite the crowd 
here in North Augusta. Here's a carry to the outside. That's Kevin Jackson. Jackson still going. We'll get to about maybe the 20-yard line, it looks like. Jackson had a wall of blockers in front mm -hmm. of him. He had a whole, whole lot of beef up there in front of him blocking from him. Look, he pulled two guards. The two guards are out front leading, and he has a full back up there blocking in front of him. Yeah, where's the beef? We found it. <laughs> I'm telling you. I was wondering, though, uh, coming in, I know you hit some traffic on the way down. I did the same. I lost 10 minutes. Um, I was supposed to be here at 610. I did not arrive until 620, much to the chagrin of my uh, GPS, which originally thought we were supposed <laughs> to be here for three hours at 610. But we'll touch on that in a moment. Wagner, Sally. Uh, next play will be uh, pretty much curtail. That, again, was a carry for the quarterback, Gage Starnes. Starnes taking it on his own that time. And... Uh, so a five-yard gain on the play, second and 10 from the 22. But the Augusta Green Jackets are playing tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, minor League Baseball at SRP Park taking on the Columbia Fireflies. So there's a whole lot of action right along the banks of the Savannah River. A lot of action going on around here, man. I love it. Great weekend, man. No matter which way you go, you go. Uh, here's a carry for Caleb Shaw. Shaw to the outside. All that Shaw and uh, Wagner Sally needed for six yards. Should have been enough that time to pick up the first down. It is a confirmed first down. There's Shaw picking up the first down. And for Shaw, I thought it was interesting when you you listen back, you go back and reflect on what Lafayette Stewart, head coach of Fox Creek, had to say about Caleb Shaw. He was saying if there's one person that keeps us up at night, it's Caleb Shaw, you know, someone that he's been preparing for. Nothing you can do with his speed. He has world-class speed. World-class speed, and he showed it on that run early. Ball mm. is almost caught. The receiver targeted that time for Wagner Sally was, again, Antonio Swedenberg. Tried to find Swedenberg deep. He just underthrew it just a little bit. But Swedenberg had a step on his man. He had a step on his man. But you got to get that out in front of Swedenberg. Oh, it hit him in the worst place possible. Yeah. Hit right. him in his hands. Head, exactly <laughs> right. You need those to catch the football. <laughs> Two for Fox Creek that time on Antonio Swedenberg, who truthfully, no doubt about it, especially from our fantastic replay angle, got away with the touchdown back in the first half. And right now, that is a big turning point in this football game, at least by the way the scoreboard looks. You know, this play is blown up pretty quickly. It was a second and 10 from the 35 for Wagner Sally that time, not much of anything. Yeah, not much of anything. Fox Creek defense kind of came in there and wanted to set something up and just stop that offensive push from right. Wagner Sally. Seems like what has happened here is it'll now be third down and nine to go on the 36-yard line as that Fox Creek ate up the first seven, eight minutes of the clock, and now Wagner Sally has the football. If they pick up a first, they may very well be able to chew up the remaining three minutes here in the third without any fresh points being applied here in the third quarter. As Starnes will go from shotgun, Starnes will keep it. Room outside for Starnes. He needed nine yards, not going to get the nine. But I like, I like the mix-up. You know, Starnes has been the throwing back. Starnes has been the throwing quarterback. And I say back instead of quarterback because all these guys are, are backs. Right. You know, and so you mix it up. You fake that little jet sweep, and you give him a chance and let him run up the middle and see what he picks up. And he picks up a nice chunk of change, but not quite enough for the first down. So it'll be fourth down and five from the 45. And Wagner Sally will go ahead and get this ball away to Fox Creek. So even though the Predators were unable to get that touchdown complete on a ball that was almost caught by Noah Barnett as they were driving before Wagner Sally took over, they are able to stop the War Eagles. Still a 16 point game. This ball bound and the chase is on. Surrounding it, watching it stop, Ian Stroman. Now, I'm not, I'm kind of confused on what happened right there. They didn't have a guy back deep to return the punt, but they didn't rush the punt to try to block the punt either. You know, if usually yeah. if you don't have somebody back deep, you're sending everybody in to block it. 
Yeah, that, that was odd. It, it was only really one for either side after it, and the one that stuck out most prominently was Ian Stroman, and Stroman got around it just like a, you know, just like watching a ball bound and try to surround it to get it into the most favorable field position for the kicking team, and that's what Stroman did. So it'll be first and 10 from the 25 for Fox Creek, and now Sly, they're stacked up on their end of the field again. They got to go that way. Johnson at quarterback. He'll air it out, caught, complete. Oh, did he go out? Flag down, Sly, you got it, my friend. Jatonius Butler that time, but a flag way back. Yep, that's in that holding area over there. Usually, that's a holding call when it's back there around that section. Yep. Caleb Shaw there on the stop of Butler, but of course, the penalty. And you know that hurts. If you're if you're on the offensive side, if you're wearing red for Fox Creek, that hurts. You get a great pass off the rollout, and all for not, because they're going to take it back 15 yards off the hole, and 15 yards from the spot of the foul. That's right. And that was back there, almost where the pocket started, where the line of scrimmage was for Fox Creek. So now it's first and 20. Multiply the yardage to gain for the Predators. First and 20 on the 15. Under two minutes to go, third quarter. Johnson rolls out. Caught, completed catch. Mm -hmm. He put one foot down. And see what's happening right now. Wagner Sally is giving so much of a cushion. Their DBs are lining up eight to nine yards off of the ball. So it's easy to run that little eight-yard line. Look at him plant his foot. Bam. And see, watch he plants that foot right there. Ooh, yeah, he might have got Ooh. away with one. Yeah, Noah Barnett, I think maybe that time he got some retribution, at least <laughs> from the no call on the ball that he dropped that could have been the uh, touchdown, they got this game back to maybe 10 points, maybe nine points earlier. It's a completed catch, second and 17, a chunk out of three yards on the play. That yeah, pressure's coming. Johnson again gets out of the pressure, and the attack is on on Jaden Johnson. But again, he's able to escape. He's brought down by the duo of Elijah Davis and Jeremiah Bynum. You know, one thing I like about Johnson, he has a great instinct timer. You know, he can feel that pressure, and he understands when it's time to tuck it and get out of there. You know, and, and that's, that's, that's really impressive for a 10th grade. I'm thinking the same thing. Uh, really, we're, Sly and I are starting to run out of superlatives here for, <laughs> <laughs> for Jaden Johnson. He, he really is. He's got that little ticker, if you will. It, he knows when the alarm's getting ready to go off. He gets out of trouble. Pretty impressive. Third and 15 from the 20, under a half minute to go third quarter. Still 36 to 20, Wagner Sally. Here's Johnson. And that one is caught. Oh, yeah, no problem that time. And the catch is completed by Michael Adams. Now you want to be careful. Right now, they keep running that eight yard out to this side of the field. It, it, all, it almost feels like now it's time to set that thing up for the out and up. Or... Pretty soon, that cornerback's just going to jump that route, and it's going to be six points the other way. Yeah, that's something to watch out for, that ball in play that could be returned. We haven't seen that yet so far tonight. We'll see if it comes to pass in the fourth quarter. That's where we're heading next. Fresh 12 minutes on the way. Final 12 minutes of regulation when we come back. It's 36 to 20. Wagner Sally, the War Eagles over the Fox Creek Predators. <laughs> Twelve minutes remaining here in regulation. Wagner Sally over Fox Creek by 16. Fourth and eight from the 27. As the Predators, the field is flipped. 
Jaden Johnson will air it out. Open receiver, that one is caught, complete. It's reeled in by Jatonius Butler. And, and this time he rolled to the left. Everything else he's been rolling to the right, rolling to the right, but this time he rolls to the left and it's the inside receiver running the out route instead of the outside receiver. Great pass, great catch. Way to go up there and shield the defender with your body. Great catch, great, great execution of that play. Coach Lafayette Stewart saying this is going to be a line of scrimmage football game tonight. That's what it's turning into, certainly for sure. Ooh. Yeah, Malik Williams is wrangled down. Yeah, it looked like in there for Wagner Sally, it was Elijah Davis. Yeah, big Elijah Davis throwing him down like a sack of potatoes. Look at the big man breaking down on the end, breaking down, facing up, making the tackle, and just throwing his man down on the ground. Good job by Mr. Davis. You got to call him Mr. Davis yeah, he after that. He deserves the, uh, you know, the extra little mark there for the name plate, if you will, border plate addition for Elijah Davis. Johnson. Plenty of time, all kinds of time. He's finally taken down Davis. Elijah Davis comes in on the sack to take down Jaden Johnson. Big Elijah Davis coming on the outside, making the tackle. Look at him, applying pressure from the outside. I don't, well, I don't know, he's dancing out there. <laughs> Look like, I don't know what he's doing out there. <laughs> Look at that move against Nick Williams from Fox Creek. He's, he's out there, they're out there dancing a little two-step. Wow. But that's called a coverage sack right there. You give credit to your DBs on that sack right there because it was no one no one for the young sophomore to throw the ball to. Good job of coverage. I know we're in North Augusta, but that was like the Charleston that time for those two guys. Here's Jaden Johnson on third and 17 from the 39. He got out of one possible tackle. Jaden Johnson will bound over one War Eagle and get to about the 45-yard line. That's going to be a hard lesson for the youngster to learn right there. He got hit hard in the thigh. He's going to learn to get rid of that ball. He's going to, he's going to learn to get rid of it. That's a tough lesson to learn with that helmet and your thigh pad. Roderick Williams that time getting down low to stop Jaden Johnson. A little bit of a trial by fire for the Fox Creek quarterback. Now let's look at this near sideline over here. This is his left side, but let's see if he, he has one-on-one -on -one coverage on the left side. Let's see if that out route comes back. Already picked up one fourth down on this drive. Jaden Johnson, deep ball. Is Ooh. anyone going to be there? No. That the closest closest to it slide was Jatonius Butler, but and that just slipped out of his hand. I don't know. I don't know what what happened on that one. That one just slipped out of the youngster's hand. Cause that was that was way short. Yeah. I'm trying to find him on the sideline. He went straight to the bench. He went straight to the bench and he has like one or two trainers around him over there on the sideline. Maybe something happened on his shoulder on that last run. Because he just didn't have any arm in that ball. Yeah, not enough that time on the pass from Jaden Johnson to Jatonius Butler. Here's uh, one more look. Obviously a turnover on downs. Wagner Sally will get the football. And now here's a chance for Wagner Sally to go ahead and shut the door on it. Yeah, they've uh, they were gifted a touchdown in the first half. I know we've made uh, we've made mention of that a couple of times. It was Antonio Swedenberg back in the first half. It looked like to us from our replay angle that his knee touched late in the first half. He was able to get back up and roll in for six points, and then a two point conversion was good. Wagner Sally has has really been uh, been on top of that so far tonight. They really have not um, not tried and at least attempted. Too many, if any, extra points have the War Eagles. They've went ahead, scored their touchdown, and then gone in for two. They've uh, decided to go the way of the two-point conversion as, a, uh, as opposed to one point, two being better than one. Both teams now will head back out onto the field. And still a 16-point lead here for Wagner Sally. It's the advantage that they've held since the halftime break. You know, Fox Creek was so close to getting a touchdown they weren't able to. Now a turnover on downs. And again, if you go back and take those eight points off the board for Wagner Sally for the touchdown for Swedenberg, that probably shouldn't have been. And then the two point conversion that would not have come from it as Jackson will carry uh, to about the 38 yard line. If you take those eight points away, 
is 28 to 20. Mm -hmm. 28 20, one touchdown game, a one score game. Yeah. You know, but hey, that's how quick and how fast stuff changes. You can't sit and cry over spilled milk, even though, and, and, and we go back to that play. A lot of people thought he was down, and they slowed up on the play. You must play all the way through the whistle. Look, you got a receiver out there by himself, wide open. They tried to make the audible. On the way. And that one caught. Is it complete? I think we're going to get offensive pass interference on that one. Antonio Swedenberg. Here it is again. Gage Starnes. Look at, they finally got a DB out there to cover him, but I think that may be offensive pass interference. Here's the play. Oh, he got, he got both hands in his back. Yeah. That was Donovan Williams. Yeah, and you called it, Sly. Williams was rolling out to get back, and Williams, sure enough, is right there in the uh, proverbial zip code of Swedenberg, 1-3 on the other. There was no way, just by the laws of, of everything that exists in football, <laughs> that Antonio Swedenberg would have gotten away with another one. <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, man. Great. Hey, shout out to our camera people out there. Uh, Tania Woody on the close angle. Marcus Burnett up high. Long angle. Those two on those two angles right there. Picking up the receivers. Pretty good. Yeah, that's, it's quite the product. I taught him well. Yeah, you certainly did, I know. Um, as the new guy to the crew, as it were, uh, it's been pretty impressive to see this group come together and, and put on a production that is as good, if not better, than anything you'll see on local television and Friday night highlight reels. This is, um, it's a superb product, and we're excited to be a part of it. And thank you to everyone who has supported us. Over 1,000-plus views last week, both live and on demand. And I think we'll trend towards that way again here in week number two, thanks to the um, powers of social media. Second and three from the 37. 8.37 to go in regulation. Wagner Sally football. Jackson has it. Met by a ton of Fox Creek defenders. Yeah, that's a defensive line who just who just tired of it right there. They, they're just tired of it. They decided to step up and make a play. And right now, running inside, you know, right off the tackle or in between the tackles, the Fox Creek defense have been there. But when they bust it to the outside, when they use some of these jet sweeps or something and get to the outside, Wagner Sally is just almost impossible to stop once they make it all the way to the edge. Yeah, the sweep and the, you know, the drawn out run play has been what has burned Fox Creek so far tonight. This play is over pretty much by the time it began. I think he may have failed for it. Yeah, I think he, he failed for it enough to get that first down. But look, I love how he gets behind all those white jerseys. You know, he should have stayed behind him a little bit longer. He tried to poke to the outside a little bit. But I love how all those white jerseys get in front of him, and they're just escorting him through the line. Yeah, Wagner Sally needed three to pick up the first down. They did from Jackson. So it's now first and 10 from the 34. 36-20 it remains. Wagner Sally on top of Fox Creek. Here's the run. A burst in the making. Ethan Stroman. Stroman down at about a little past the 10. St Stroman runs hard. Stroman, I think he's carried the ball four times, and it's been 12 players trying to bring him down each time he carries. He runs the ball so hard. One guy is not going to bring Stroman down. He broke past C.J. Tillman. Look at he this power, powerful running runner to get through the line. Tillman couldn't stop him. Number 35 for Fox Creek. So, first and 10 from the 14. Wagner Sally trying to put a bow on this one possibly with another score. Again, it's Stroman. He'll take it. Stroman looking for room. Bounced off of one. And a little short of the end zone. Yeah, Stroman's a load. He is yeah. a load going down there. And then you put a couple of blockers in front of him, it's even worse. So, Strowman after that nice carry. And now we're into the 
goal line portion inside the 20 yard line for Wagner Sally. It'll be second down and four from the six. And a little uh, misdirection that time. Run to the end zone. Got to cut back to get into the house. He's there for the touchdown. Caleb Shaw. Shaw getting it on a hot potato-esque play as he got it, it looked like, from Kevin Jackson. Jackson, you'll see it here now, getting it to Shaw. Shaw took it the rest of the way. Caleb Shaw, he is just a dynamic back. Look at him stretch it all the way to the edge as far as he can go, and then he cuts up field and just has a nose for the end zone. Great job by Caleb Shaw, man. He's showing why he's one of the most dynamic players here in this Augusta area, the CSRA area. Yeah, the CSRA Bowl, one of our big sponsors here on SUV TV. And certainly you think of someone like Caleb Shaw being a big part of that bowl and a, a bowl and an a all-star caliber player, no doubt. And the leap at the end to make it 42-20, to 20, Wagner Sally. Touchdown, Caleb Shaw. He had a big burst earlier in the ball game. That one considerably shorter, but nonetheless still very impressive. We're having problems trying to figure out things on these uh, extra point attempts right here. A lot of pillars. Most, it seems like every extra point attempt they've attempted tonight, they've had some type of marker on the field. Yeah, we're just, uh, just a little over two hours in, two hours and 16 minutes to be exact. Started at 7.30, about 15 minutes before 10 o'clock here in North Augusta. So really, some of the reason for the pauses in action tonight have been for these extra points, trying to get everyone set. And again, Wagner Sally really has not gone the extra point route too many times tonight. They've been fine with seeking out there too. <laughs> we got big Elijah Davis lined up at wide out out here on the near side. They're going for those two again. Here's a lofted ball. That's out of the reach of Elijah Davis. You called it Sly. Not a chance at time for Elijah to catch it. It'll remain 42-20, Wagner Sally. Yeah, they tried to use that size advantage right there. Tried to get him on that reverse run option pass right there, and it just uh, overthrew the big man. Yeah, that would have been the uh, capper for sure, as it is. A uh, three-plus touchdown lead here for Wagner Sally over Fox Creek. It, just seems to be one of those games that happens so often over the course of a season to where I know the Predators and head coach Lafayette Stewart in his first official game as a head coach after many years of assistant coaching work, you know, he's going to look back, I'm sure, and go back and think about the touchdown, you know, to Swedenberg, although from his angle, he probably didn't really see it the way that we did. So you may not go back to that, but certainly the chance that Fox Creek had in the third quarter to get a touchdown, which, could have reduced this to a 10-point game and didn't come to pass. And then Wagner Sally, the offense returning here in the fourth quarter and starting to pull away in front of a, uh, a crowd that continues to largely still stay intact. And the student section has been uh, jamming since the start. I'm telling you, man, student section has been on their feet the entire game. Wow. The entire game, student section has been on their feet jamming and rocking supporting their home team. Well, one thing that head coach Lafayette Stewart did say in terms of uh, upcoming games and for Fox Creek, it'll be uh, C.A. Johnson here next Friday on September the 6th at 7.30 to take on the Predators and then Fox Creek on the road against uh, McCormick on September the 13th at 7.30. But Lafayette Stewart, head coach for Fox Creek, did say to us on Wednesday, said it's hard to look past Wagner Sally tonight, and he said what sticks out about this team is their athleticism. So no doubt, you know, Lafayette Stewart was not looking past Wagner Sally. He had the team ready to go. I think you could tell that from the way that they played in the uh, first, second, and third quarters. And if you really take out a little burst towards the end of the second and the most recent touchdown for Wagner Sally, this would be probably a closer game. Fox Creek has been able to hang in there. Predators will start the drive after Jatonius Butler took it out. Looks like it's around maybe the uh, 15, 16 yard line. Hey, give a big star, put a star beside Dalton Jeffcoat over here, sophomore DB wide receiver. That's his second uh, kickoff tackle, man, second special teams tackle right there. Young man, you know what I like? I like when a young sophomore, you know, not in the starting lineup, probably doesn't get much playing time on defense, but he makes his presence felt on the special teams. 
You know, and that's maybe not this year, but that's what's going to get you to play playing time next year. Always looking ahead. What you do tonight can make an impact as you go. That one just over the fingertips of Jacoby, uh, Ryan Chavis, rather. So Chavis almost had a chance to reel it in, but just a little too a tingly that time from Jaden Johnson. Yep, got to make that catch. Got to be able to pull that one in. You know, it, you, you're down. <laughs> you're down, and it's, 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 it's do or die time for you right now. You got to make these plays. Yeah, time to go now. Down by 22. You need a quick touchdown here if you're Fox Creek. Second and 10 from 30. Johnson wanted to hand it off to Williams instead. Keeps it. Pressure comes. Johnson getting out of pressure for the umpteenth time tonight. And then he crashes down at about the 35-yard line. And, and you know, here, here's something you want to give credit to. We won't get a chance to see it on the replay, but give credit 15, 20 yards down the field to the defensive backfield from Wagner Sally. They are playing a pretty good job out there containing the receivers and forcing Johnson to tuck it and run. Yeah, it's been pretty well covered up down there. As a result, Johnson has to keep it. This time he loses it, picks it back up. Now the pressure is on. Jaden Johnson trying his hardest to wrangle out of a sack. Will be credited a sack for Wagner Sally. A couple getting in on it. Uh, one of those was uh, Taekwon Jerry. Taekwon Jerry and young freshman over there also, Demarion William Williams, getting back there and getting his name in the scores book for a sack. Yeah, Johnson just tried his hardest, but. He was on the way down. Just He's been able to escape a couple of times tonight, just not able to pull off the great escape that time. Not a uh, Steve McQueen move that time for Jaden Johnson with um, you know, about a little under five minutes to go here in regulation. See Johnson getting a pat there on the back of the jersey from one of the Fox Creek assistants. That's the guy right there, Jaden yeah. Johnson. See, I think he's, I'm not sure if he's holding his shoulder down a little bit when he was coming off the sideline. I'm not sure if maybe he took, took a hit to that shoulder. Something to watch as kick is away from Ray, Jackson Ray. Wagner Sally returner, Antonio Swedenberg. Swedenberg will break to the outside. Flag comes in to the 50. 40, 30, 25 for Antonio Swedenberg, but there it is, laundry. A little bit of laundry on the field. That would be coming back. I think it's probably a hit in the back. Let's look for it on this replay. You know, those blindside blocks, the referees will call it. I don't know. He threw the flag. I'm not quite sure why he threw it. I'm not seeing it there either. Uh, there we go. He, I, he threw it a bit late, but that's it. I think he may have called that one on Roger Williams, maybe. Maybe, I guess. Origi no. Yeah, originally Swedenberg got away from uh, number 25, Malik Thomas, and then it could have come after that. Who knows? Um, <laughs> Who knows? It's early season for the refs, too. Yeah, and you've even got a... Uh, one of the referees there receiving a little bit of uh, of love from one of the Wagner Sally players. That was Nigel Brown who had his arm around one of the referees. When you're up by 22, yeah. you can probably be a little bit more friendly. And Wagner Sally has, has earned that right tonight. They have played well here in the second half. And Fox Creek, it's just going to be one of those games that we were so close. One or two things had just gone a little bit differently. Two or three little signpost markers in this game that led up to the twilight zone, if you will, for Fox Creek. Down by a couple touchdowns with 3.50 to go in regulation. We'll have the post-game wrap-up. A few thoughts on what we saw tonight. And we'll get ready for week three next Friday. Same cast and crew back with you after our long holiday break. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting close. We're getting close to about that time now. You know, we've got to start thinking of, 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 of who, who we want to give this player the game thing to. You know, we got to 
getting kind of close to that time. A lot of players stepped up and a lot of players are shining. I would, yeah. yeah, I would love to hear what Chad thinks. Maybe for his player of the game, he's been down there around the field. I, I know there's so many. I can think of at least three or four. Mm -hmm. And not just for Wagner Sally, but for Fox Creek as well. If, you know, if it goes to the just the player that played the best tonight, that could happen on either side, despite the score. And it looks like Wagner Sally, man, they're going to keep this thing on the ground and try yeah. to go on home with it. Looks like it. That was Jeremiah Bynum that time with the carry. First and seven from the 24 for Wagner Sally. Three minutes flat remaining. And again, you can watch the broadcast on demand. You can go back and replay your favorite moments. It'll also be uh, utilized on Twitter at SUV TV and at SUV TV football as well, if I'm not mistaken. Well, before we get the first, uh, the next play here with 2.38 to go, we'll have a timeout. You know, one thing about this, right now you still have valuable coaching moments. The game isn't over. You know, you know, may, maybe your, your chances of winning are, you know, maybe. Yeah. You hate to say, hate to say you don't have it, but sure. let's, let's just be realistic. But you still have valuable coaching moments right here. And now is the time as a coach you figure out what type of team do you have. Do you have a team that will quit or do you have a team that's going to go into that final whistle? You know, so this is a valuable learning moment on both sides of the ball because even for Wagner Sally, you have to know how to finish a game, how to close a game out. And, you know, so now you have to make sure that your running backs – know how to properly hold on to that ball, how to tuck that ball in there tight. Great learning moments in moments like this in a game like this. Yeah, everyone has to be able to play their position, play it well, and play until the final whistle. I know as a former player, there were chances to shine even in, as they say, garbage time. Mm -hmm. Third seven from the 27 for Wagner Sally. Pretty bunched backfield. Starnes will air it out. A little too high, a little too far, a little too quick that time for receiver Antonio Swedenberg. Yeah, it looks like he overthrew him on that play, and Swedenberg actually had to step on his man. That's a great route. He ran the little inside, what we call flag route. Great route right there. He just overthrew his man. And he was followed right there in lockstep by Donovan Williams for uh, Fox Creek. Fourth down for Wagner Sally. Fourth and seven. The way the time is right now with 2.33 to go. If Fox Creek can get a stop, they'll have another chance with the football. Maybe to tack on a touchdown that they missed out on a little bit earlier, which would be something to at least go out on a high note with. We'll see. A little high on the boot back before the kick. It'll bound right at the 40-yard line and covered up there. Takes that nice kicker's roll. Yeah. Did. yeah, Antonio Swedenberg with the boot. It did get a friendly roll. He's been the luckiest guy out here tonight, I think. Antonio <laughs> <I'm telling> Swedenberg. <laughs> Tempted to make him the player of the game, at least for me, just <laughs> because of how, how many things he's been involved in, and they all worked out. <laughs> I'm going to need him to go and pick my lottery numbers tonight, man. He's been that lucky. <laughs> I was thinking about that same thing, how many times you mentioned the lottery last week. He's, uh, he's as lucky as you were last week in those calls. My goodness. Uh, I'm telling you. First and 10 from the 40. Fox Creek. Uh, out to the 45 that time. The carry. Like Butler that time. So basically, I'll get the coach over there and you'll buy Thank you. Uh, rather, the carry that time for Fox Creek was Kendrell Carter. My apologies. Yep, Carter, new back in the game, new quarterback in the game also. That's right. For Fox Creek, that's Michael Adams. We finally get our first Michael Adams appearance of the night. Adams pressured, roll out of bounds. Pretty good hit applied there at the end by Wagner Sally's Taekwon Jerry. 
Poor, poor Michael got a rude awakening in the high yeah. school football right there on the side on the sideline. Certainly did. You know, we were waiting to see Adams. We finally do. He and Jaden Johnson. We knew those would be the two quarterbacks. And with the way Johnson played in the first, second, third, and even a little bit of the fourth here, he remains in until Adams comes in at quarterback for Fox Creek. Adams. Here's the handoff. Mm, push ahead for maybe one or two. Carry that time for again for Kendrell Carter. So under a minute to go. Yep, nice strong run, just straight up the middle, you know, trying to keep that clock moving, trying to, you know, establish something for your team going in the next week, you know. Establish a confidence, you know, a confidence builder going in the next week because you have a running back and a quarterback who, who didn't start the game and who hadn't played. So now you give them a chance because you never know in football. In football, you're one injury away from being a superstar. Here's Adams, drops the football, picks it back up, pressure is on. Adams out close to the 40. He got out of trouble. And look at that, making something out of nothing. He picked up the first down off of a, a, a bad snap, a mishandled snap, and he picked up the first down. Way to have great field awareness to find yourself and find out how to get that first down. Well, Michael Adams came in for just a couple of snaps. We get our final score, 42 to 40, Wagner Sally over Fox Creek on this Friday night. It's a win for the War Eagles who improved to 2-0 on the season. Fox Creek falling to 0-1. And we have Wagner Sally almost reaching the 46 point mark that they put up last week. And their week one victory was a 46 to two win. And so they come back in week two and are challenged much more considerably by Fox Creek, but they do win 42 to 20. Just a couple of missed opportunities. Here in a couple moments, we're going to get it down to Chad Cook on the field. He's going to get an interview with winning head coach Willie Fox. And we'll get Chad there to speak with Coach Fox and uh, get a couple of post-game thoughts. We'll head down the field here in a couple moments. But again, that's the final, Wagner Sally, 42 to 20. That's our game, uh, our week two final score tonight here from North Augusta, South Carolina. With post-game thoughts coming here in a couple moments. But you know, this game, again, uh, Sly, could have gone either way for Fox Creek especially. I, I just look back at a couple missed opportunities. Yeah, just a couple of missed opportunities, and that's what this game is about. It's not necessarily about who is the better team on paper. It's not who's the bigger team out here on the field. It's taking advantage of your opportunities, taking advantage of when, when something is presented to you, and that's what Wagner Sally did. A big fumble, if we remember back at uh, 532 left in the second quarter, 532 left in the second quarter, Fox Creek fumbled the ball. They fumbled the ball and Wagner Sally came. Wagner Sally came and capitalized on that fumble and ran in and scored a touchdown on the next possession. And that's what kind of blew the game wide open. Taking advantage of your of the other team's mistakes. Yeah, Fox Creek had a chance there to score a touchdown, which could have cut it to 10 points. It just didn't quite work out. And Chad will have our post-game interview here in a couple moments. And uh, we'll go down the field and get those thoughts from him. Snapping a couple pitchers on the field at the moment is you know, the uh, our guy, Chad Cook, he's on the field. And we'll, we'll get it down to him here in a couple moments. We'll alert you when we're ready but to go down. But yeah. But now, who, who do you think now? We're going to put the pressure on you. We're going to start giving away some, some MVPs of, the, of tonight's game. Who, who do you think stood out for you tonight? Who would you give your? Your MVP tonight. It's tough. I see Caleb Shaw, Kevin Jackson, and even though Swedenberg got a little bit of a gift on one play, regardless, he still had the presence of mind to, to complete the play, as you mentioned. Still, though, the guy that was talked up coming in was Caleb Shaw. I'd have to give it to Caleb Shaw tonight for Wagner Sally. He was as advertised, as they say. He, he came to play, and he wasn't the only playmaker, but he made some big ones. You're right. He did, he did make some big plays. But you know what, though? I think on that side of the ball, on Wagner, Sally's side, you know, I really like Kevin Jackson. Kevin Jackson had three touchdown runs on the night. 
Let's make sure. Yep, three touchdown runs on the night. But he ran hard. What I liked about him, he ran hard. And look at this one right here. This is the first touchdown of the night. Look at him as he gets to the goal line and he lowers that shoulder, man. I, I like that. A great game of running by Kevin, jo I mean, Kevin Jackson tonight. He, he's my guy if I'm going to go on the Wagner Sally side of the ball. Ke Kevin Jackson had an impressive game for me. Three scores. Yeah, that's true. Kevin Jackson, he was such a force there early on the first quarter and even into the second. It seemed like every carry or direct snap for Wagner Sally was to, John, uh, to, to Kevin Jackson. He was uh, producing yardage there um, in, in myriad ways there in the first half. Cooled off a little bit in the second half, but he made the presence felt there first half and got Wagner Sally off to a good start. And they went into halftime with the 36-20 uh, to 20 lead, added a touchdown in the second half. And that was all for our scoring. It, it felt like maybe we would get the same type of offense in the second half that we got in the first. Just wasn't to be. And Fox Creek had their opportunities. I especially go back to that chance for Noah Barnett. I just wasn't quite able to complete that catch and get it in. I go back to that because at that time it was 36 to 20. That could have made it 36, 26. And they could have, of course, gone for a two point conversion possibly. It, it didn't happen but it could have been an eight-point game. It was not, and Wagner Sally then with that uh, last touchdown able to uh, really get that breathing room to move them now to 2-0 uh, to on the season after the big 46-2 win uh, last week and, you know, and then coming in and being challenged more by Fox Creek but able to get the victory. They're 2-0 on the season. 2-0 on the season, way to start the season off. And now 0-1 on the other side of the ball for Fox Creek. But... You learn a lot of things tonight if you're Fox Creek. This is your first game of the year. You have a young team, but you know what type of team you have. And you, and most importantly, you know who's the leader of this team right now. You know you have a quarterback for the next three years in Jaden Johnson. You have somebody who's not afraid and who will take you down the field. So even though they lost, he still had an impressive game at quarterback for his first game starting as a young sophomore. So you'll take that. You'll, you know, you, you always want to go home with a win. I mean, you always want to win, but sometimes you'll have to take that in the loss. You use a loss as a learning lesson. And I think this Fox Creek team and these Fox Creek fans learn what type of squad they have. Yeah, Jaden Johnson was absolutely terrific tonight. He was bouncing around and able to move out of the pocket, made a couple nice throws downfield, and just showed off a lot of strength and power for someone who's, again, just a sophomore, a lot of experience in there as well, Jaden Johnson. Even though Fox Creek falls tonight, Johnson certainly someone uh, that must be mentioned on this Friday. Keeping an eye on Chad Cook on the field. Yeah, I think Ch Chad's getting ready down there. Yeah, Chad looks to be ready to go with a, <laughs> with a couple of Wagner Sally players. So we'll send it down now to Chad Cook, who will talk to a couple of War Eagles, the victorious War Eagles tonight, 42 to 20. All right. Young girl always wanted to run the ball when I was in ninth and tenth grade, and then coming to the eleventh grade, I worked extremely hard on my speed and stuff. So this year, when Coach gave me the knot to step up, I wanted to show him that I could do it. There were plays the guys before me. Yeah. So, so is this your first year getting a lot of snaps? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, sir. Last year, I kind of shared time with a, another senior, but this year, he said this was my year. Yeah. Well, you make a lot. Of, you make a lot happen when you touch that football. Great game out there today. Now, Antonio, that, that play over there on the sideline that got kind of called back, what was the call on that play? Uh, I think it was like pushing it back, blocking it back. Push on you. Oh, oh, it wasn't even, it wasn't on you. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, great game. Talking about speed with Caleb. Um, you know, tell us how, how you use your athleticism to make big plays out there tonight. Man, you just got to see, see the end zone. So, you see the end zone, you just got to go for it. Yep, yep. Now, I hear you're a good basketball player, too. Is there? What sport are you better at? 
for basketball. Really? Yes, sir. Well, I got to come back and watch some more War <laughs> Eagles basketball if you're better at that than uh, football. Come on over here, Weston. Last week you had, I think, 15 tackles. I want to say eight for a loss, three forced fumbles. Um, how much fun are you having during your senior season out here? Having a lot of fun just coming here to play the sport. Yeah, yeah. So what's uh, you know what, what what went on out there from your position, the defensive end position, that that you know felt good and and, and put you in a position to get this win? Well, we've been working for since like January, so my. As of like getting outside, like using like the technique coaches have taught us, and, like that's it. If I know I could do it right, it's good. Show me a technique. I mean, you don't have to get down in a stance <laughs> or anything, but like, what's a, what's a thing you do technique-wise to get 15 tackles, eight for a loss, three forced fumble stats like that? Since I play defense, like a dip and like a rip through. Nice. The nice. defense tackle on my soul, I just ripped through, and the quarterback right there in my sight. Nice. You play defense. You also play offense as well, right? Yes, sir. And um, so t tell me before we go, um, Caleb, when you're running the football, you know, you get all the glory. Talk about these guys up front that clear the way for you. Oh, it all starts up front. All our linemen, they're my best friends in school. Me and Weston got every class period together. It, it starts being on, on off the field. With us being so close, we've been playing football since we was five years old. And now it's just family when we on the field. They protect me, and I, I show for them. You got to have their back. Hey, great job, guys. You guys did an excellent job. We're proud to show you on the AUG B-Ball football game of the week, powered by SUV TV. Um, you're great representatives of the CSRA. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Nice job. Nice job. Uh, Chad Cook there with Antonio Swedenberg, Caleb Shaw, and Weston Williams. That said it all, Sly, I didn't play football in high school. You probably can look at me and tell, <laughs> but you did, and that's a lot of camaraderie down there. That's a lot of camaraderie, and, and you know, we got the word up here in the booth earlier today that these guys have, you just heard Caleb say they've been playing together since, the, uh, since they were five, six years old, but they also were a part of a middle school team that went 10 and 0. So that camaraderie, you know, that working together, that spirit, you know, that, that, that teamwork spirit, you know, it all shows come their senior year in football. And that's why this Wagner Sally team is projected to go a long way in the state of South Carolina. Yeah, no doubt about that. What we saw tonight from Wagner Sally was uh, quite something, making us uh, very eager and ready to go for week number three of the season. Uh, that will take us to North Augusta at Grovetown. That's a tentative schedule right now for next Friday night. It'll be our uh, post-Labor Day broadcast. Um, for the entire crew tonight, Sly, it was another fun one, my friend, 42-20 to 20 as Wagner Sally gets the victory over Fox Creek and saw a back-and-forth ball game, and we're ready to go one week from now. One week from now, man. I'm anxious. I'm here. I'm ready, man. This was great fun and had Chad Cook on the uh, sidelines to uh, make our post-game interview possible with three of the stars for Wagner Sally, Swedenberg, uh, Shaw, and Weston Williams. So for everyone on this entire team that makes uh, these broadcasts possible, I'm Corey Hodges alongside Sylvester Williams. It takes an entire team effort. And you can check out the uh, on-demand replay. It's on Twitter, of course. You can check that out. Uh, on uh, SUV TV on Twitter, also SUV TV football. That on demand replay will also be up on YouTube. You can check it out on demand. And you've got an extra day on Monday to do that with the holiday break. So we say so long on this Friday night from North Augusta, South Carolina, 42 to 20. It's Wagner Sally over Fox Creek. Enjoy your extended holiday break. And we're back with you again on September the 6th, North Augusta at Grovetown. So long on a Friday from North Augusta on the banks of the Savannah River.